junior year. What's the America tonight, all right? It's United States of America. It's United. They can't stop us. We are the new president. We don't want these old presidents. Come on. This election is a joke. We all know it's a joke. Okay? Democracy starts right here tonight at that open mic on that stage. I am proud to be an American. Can we kill the music? Can we kill this hype music, please? Give it up for Kuzu Daddy, everybody, on the ones and twos. A true success story, the American dream in action, everybody. Thank you all for coming out. We're exercising our First Amendment rights here tonight. This is why they wrote Des, Des Laws. I mean, we're ready to get... We're ready to get... The government is analog. We, have, we are in a digital world, right? We're ready to get the Supreme Court... It's screwing us and every it's it's rigged. The game is up, right? So we're here to to spread truth, okay? With poetry. Who <laughs> can you imagine Richard? What are the monsters? How is this? This is not the best we could do. Anybody, I guarantee you there's ten, probably thirty people on the list that could be a better president than anybody who's in the race right now. So, someone here tonight will get elected. We're announcing the campaign here. Somebody has got to be, come on, we cannot, oh my God, it's so, I didn't want to celebrate. Does anybody celebrate this terrible, uh, uh, racist holiday? I'm just gonna say it, colonialist, racist empire, but the First Amendment. I kind of believe in it, you know, in the last few years. You know, have kind of, you know, because now it's Twitter, they let everybody on Twitter, and that's supposedly pro First Amendment, but I believe in your poetry, I believe in your truth, there's no fake news in this room, it's all authenticity, and it's, it's, there's going to be some hilarious comedy. I didn't prepare any remarks tonight, okay? I'm just going to, uh, I'm going off, because that's what, uh, these, uh, the last president did, he never had any speeches or anything, he just had, he had his rallies. <laughs> Which is sort of like an open mic, except he doesn't let anybody else go. So that's not what this is, okay? This is the Vox Populi, okay? This is, we're going to hear the real news, okay? We get, we get a democ a true democracy of voices. Every, it's equal, equal time, <laughs> equal time under the law, we believe in it, everybody. I was watching this TikTok video of Bill Clinton jogging popped up. His jogging shorts, wow, are literally, and his thighs are so soft. And then this, this video of him popped up. Okay, it was, it was, first it was Emma Roberts scrambling out of this bookstore like, oh my God, paparazzi, this is crazy. And then they go into the bookstore and guess who's there? Bill. Bill is there. And he's just like... He's like so into the books. He's like, mm. you can just tell. He's like, he's like, he's like picking them up very sensually and like turning the pages. And you're like, fuck, what happened? <laughs> With the, this hellscape country, we, I, <laughs> we have to save ourselves. Okay, the government is our enemy, and we are running on that platform here tonight. We're gonna rewrite the rules here tonight. I mean, we have the fine uh, comedians are the modern day philosophers, right? We, we know that, right? Joe Rogan told us that. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to mention. Okay, so we have, uh, yeah, President Rogan. I've never mentioned it again. KGB bar, everybody. This is the this is the People's University, and it's it's you know for the small price of a two drink minimum, you get to have a voice. Isn't that incredible? And you can even use the old fashioned microphone. We brought that out here, especially for all you guys. 
And uh, thank you all for coming out. I cannot wait to get started. Once again, it's a five minute time limit. It's a two drink minimum. And we're fucking throwing all the bullshit away. And I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. We're going to rewrite the rules tonight. But in the name of humanity and beauty and poetry, give yourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> Music. I'm very excited about this first act. He's one of our favorites here at the open mic. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get some music from David Segovia. What do you say? Give it up for David Segovia. <laughs> and we do have the wireless microphone, okay? We play your backing tracks. It's like, you know, we got a light. It's, this is the VMAs, basically, okay? We're, this is show, this is edutainment, this is governtainment, okay? This is the future of the government. The pre, I mean, it's just a media, right? The, it's all just entertainment anyway, the state of the union. And, so we're gonna kick it up a couple notches.
Check them out. March the 3rd at the Footlight, everybody. Give it up for David Segovia. Oh, my God. That nylon string is that's so Oh, my God. Great guitar playing. Fantastic. We love it. All right. We have so many great acts tonight. Thank you all for coming out. Once again, it's a two-drink minimum here on the three-day weekend. We have Mohammed Patel. You are on deck. Mohammed Patel. Andrea Wang is after that. Then Trish Grisafi. Trish Grisafi. If you're here, this is... First comedian is very funny, everybody. Let's give them a warm welcome. Can we have a big round of applause? Give it up for the hilarious comedy stylings of Jason D. Matios, everybody. Yeah. Welcome to the KGB bar. Let's give our host for a uh, round of applause for our host. President on one sole basis on belly slaps. <laughs> you know, belly slap for me is a belly slap for you. Um, I wish we brought back comically large fat presidents. <laughs> Tapped by far is my favorite. And I had a lot of hope for Chris Christie, and then he had to drop out. So, you know, we need a fat guy on the Democrat side, fat guy on the Republican side, and just sumo wrestler for presidency. <laughs> but, you know, uh, uh, give a round of applause if you're single on Valentine's Day. Woo! Anyone interested in me after the show, please? <laughs> but you know, dating's tough. Dating's tough in the city. I'm on all the dating apps. There's Hinge, Bumble, Tinder. There are even some Jewish ones. I'm, I'm on Locks Club and Face Swipe. And this girl in her bio, she goes, Dating me is like your Sunday bagel order. I go, what? Fishing and overpriced? <laughs> But these girls, they care about height, you know? I, I say I'm a Jewish six foot, a.k.a. 5'8". <laughs> but you know, uh, I get compared as a celebrity comparison all the time is I get Jonah Hill. That's never a compliment. It's like, you look so Jewy or you're getting fatter. So I don't know what they're telling me, so. But you know, Jews have a tough, you know, we have really weak stomachs, but we like all foods. Mexican, Indian, the IBS just goes out of control. And where Scott takes off 10% of our dick as well, so it's a big move. But, uh, you know, I live in the city, you know, everyone in the city needs to have a roommate. My roommate, he's disgusting. He doesn't clean up after himself, doesn't take the garbage out, doesn't do his laundry. And worst part is he's a chronic porn guy, you know. I, and he even jerks me off at night. I should say I live by myself. I, uh, I do sales. Sales is a tough job. A lot of rejection like comedy. And I make about 40 cold calls a day. And I sell loyalty programs to grocery stores. And I'm calling this guy and he goes, hey, I do loyalty. He goes, there's no loyalty in this world. I go, fuck out, Ted Bundy. I have a five minute pitch for you. But you know, I get confused as a woman all the time on these sales calls. Because you know, I gotta go up and up, this guy sound cheery. So I went by a gender neutral name, Jamie, you know, and he can pay your to rent here. And this guy, you know, this Joe Schmo from Indiana, there's a lot of perverts out there. And things get a little hot and heavy, and we ended up having phone sex. I did not get the sale, but I made him come. But I like to get chippy in the office, as I say. You know, wrestling and catching the footballs and roughhousing and HR has no problem with this, but as soon as I get a boner, I have to talk to my boss. <laughs> Corporate world, am I right? But yeah, I, I tell my boss all the time, legally if I shit myself, 
you have to send me home. <laughs> he goes to me, you're all bark no bite. To which I reply, oh, yeah, yeah, fart no shark. <laughs> Nah, you know, dating stuff, dating stuff. I, I once saw this girl from Utah, and big culture shock when she came into the thing. And uh, she said, the worst thing about New York City is the diversity. I said, how dare you? <laughs> I only slept with her four more times, and that was it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, everybody. Give it up for Jason Dean, Matthew Ice, everybody. Hilarious. We love it, we love it, we love it. We've got so much coming, we're just gonna keep it going. We have Andrea Wang on deck, we have Trish Grisafi after that. We have Layla Chicolina. We need the voice of the Midwest, this next comedian. He's everywhere, he's, he's a fellow Ohioan. I mean, I don't know, we should hold that against him, but he's one of the funniest guys. We love him, we love his crowd work. Give it up for the hilarious Mohammed Patel, everybody. Thank you. Ah. All right. You're sitting on the ground in front of the stage. Yes. You're talking and I'm doing a comedy thing. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. I don't like during sex when uh, women yell my name. Uh, I don't know if they're talking about me or the prophet. <laughs> right? Like I could be doing so well, she's yelling my name. Or I'm doing so poorly, she has started praying. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I like, uh, I like it when the people argue in public. I love watching that. Anybody else? Yeah, it's fucking dope, dude. Uh, last week, I saw a couple break up. And uh, it was just like, uh, the, the lady was all like, you, you got a small dick and you smell. <laughs> And then the dude was like, but baby, I still love you. <laughs> and he's like, you braid your pubes, I'm gonna tell everybody. <laughs> baby, I can change. <laughs> All right, that was fun. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I, I wanna do like the sperm bank thing. Well, I wanna like sell my sperm, right? <laughs> but I don't wanna go through a middleman of the sperm bank. That's right. I'm selling it on Canal Street. <laughs> on one of those foldable plastic tables. <laughs> Discount jizz, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's real calm, all right? That's, that's all we can promise you. <laughs> Some of them might be hoarse, I don't I like... <laughs> That's ridiculous. I, it's way easier for me to get human sperm than horse sperm. What am I saying? <laughs> what? You all can acquire horse sperm? <laughs> all right, now. <laughs> Look, this was funny to me on the train here. <laughs> <laughs> While a guy kept yelling, fuck you, red shoes, to me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this guy... He was saying, fuck you, fuck your philosophy. That was his trauma. That, yeah. <laughs> well, he said I didn't know how to do business, and I've never done business with a man. <laughs> and yeah, I've started the sperm thing to spite him. <laughs> All right. Um... I, uh, I, I, I found out recently you can haggle with doctors if they're a private practice. Like I found, look, they can't be good doctors, all right? <laughs> also, like, they got, it's gotta be really, like, it was a foot doctor, all right? This isn't like a bougie heart doctor. <laughs> uh, it was weird, man. Like, first of all, to schedule an appointment, you gotta text him. It's not like a, like a, fucking application. I just texted him and he, I told him I had an ingrown toenail and he said, send me a picture of your feet. <laughs> I'm like, who's paying who here, doc? <laughs> and I, he was like, ah, it'll be $350. And I said, I'd rather be in pain. I'd rather, you know what I mean? Physical pain I can handle. Financial strife, oof. <laughs> but uh, no, he's like, all right, what can you do? I said, a uh, hundred. He said, can you do a buck, uh, 150? And I said, deal. 
And I go there, and he just takes my entire toe off, uh, toenail off. I got the toe still. <laughs> I'm standing pretty. Uh, <laughs> the toe is it's it's barren, man. It looks like I don't know, man. I like. <laughs> I was gonna say alopecia and you showed the fuck up. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> You're much more handsome than my big toe. I, I'm sorry. Is that po I'm trying to be positive. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. I'm a, I'm a U.S. Like I'm a new. I, like I earned my citizenship, you know. Oh, by the way, I forgot to announce this. Uh, Matt told me this uh, before the show, but in honor of President's Day, white people had to say the N-word. <laughs> oh, he said no. I don't know, man. Hey, I'm, 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 a, I'm an immigrant. I get it. Boo. <laughs> America treats its immigrants like the management of a Waffle House treats drunk people at 3 a.m. <laughs> it's like, hey, we don't want you here, but we can't kick you out, so behave. <laughs> and the drunk people are like, look, we built this business. <laughs> Without us, there would be no Waffle House. And then the management uh, puts their kids in cages. <laughs> like, y'all ever been drunk at a Waffle House? They'll take your kids. <laughs> hey, thank you, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a promo Patel. See, you give them the First Amendment, they just try to take you down. We need the president. That's all right. People gunning for you. People try to character assassinate you. That's okay. I got these pockets. I got a three-piece suit, okay? Like a, like a president from the 1880s, okay? I can do this. So give it up one more time for Mo Patel, everybody. It's try to be nice to the audience. Be nice to the audience. That's my advice to comedians. Don't be nice. You compliment the audience. All right, so we have Trish Grisafi. You are on deck. We have Layla Chicolina coming up after that. We have Marie Christine, R.A.G. Can we get the hilarious, this comedian hasn't been in a while. I don't think we're super excited to have him back. Can we get Andrea Wang up? Give it up for Andrea Wang. All right, one more time for your host. Thank you guys so much. Thank for coming. I like that you're sitting on the ground. I think it's fun. Oh, God, I had such a good day. I was walking around Canal Street. I was shopping for sperm. Do you guys think it's good? Do you think it's real? It was really cheap. Do you think? No, but like Matt said, thank you so much for having me. My name's Andrea Wang. Uh, well, you know, it's a Chinese name, so in Chinese, if you didn't know, it's Wong. Um, but either way, you know, it's okay. I'm not picky. I think people kind of pick. Sometimes Chinese people do correct me though about it, which is okay. It's like, you know, your choice either. Uh, but I have had white people correct me about the pronunciation of my name. <laughs> that was like a little weird, right? <laughs> no offense, white people. Uh, yeah, it was weird. I remember I was 14. I went to a summer camp and uh, I was signing in uh, with the counselor and I said, Hi, my name's Andrea Wang. And the guy was like, Oh, you mean Wong? <laughs> Yeah, I know, that's kind of how I react. <laughs> but, um, no, you guys are good white people, you know what I'm saying. You guys know what I'm putting down. But I was, uh, luckily, very, you know, empowered, uh, young Asian American woman. I responded the way a young Asian American woman might, who was very empowered. Uh, you know, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> so. No, it's good. I'm, I'm really happy. It's really nice to be here. God, I haven't been in the KGB for a while, and uh, uh, it's been good because I I, uh, I I live in a basement. Okay, I live in a basement in Bushwick. You know? <laughs> Come on, you artsy fartsy people. I know you're out there. God. I did. It was terrifying. Yes. Okay. Let me tell you. Maybe you can relate to this. So I thought it was going to be a good deal, cheap rent, whatever. I did. It was terrifying. Oh, lo yo, lo let me tell you how it's terrifying. So, uh, no one was sorry. Well, that's a different. That's a different thing. I think that's a different problem. Okay, so that's the thing. I thought it was gonna be like I thought I was gonna be able to handle it, but I realized it started getting to me because it started changing my my politics, like my whole world. Right. So I remember I was like uh, I was in the basement looking at YouTube videos. This guy, uh, people are piling on him in the comments. He deserved it because he said something really sexist. I remember watching his YouTube video. 
Um, and somebody said, like, hey, get out of here, you basement dwelling incel. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, uh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> okay. uh, let's separate the art from the artist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's good to be here. Oh, it's been a tough. It's been a tough uh, 2024. Anybody else start out time? Woo! Yeah, okay. It's something about the vibes. I don't know what it is because I just had a tough breakup. I had a weird breakup. I, mean, I know there's single. Somebody said there's single people here for Valentine's Day. So okay. but I'll tell you what happened. Oh my God. If, the thing about New York is there's so many wonderful strangers that are so supportive and. I was in an Uber and uh, I was so desperate. And I was like to my Uber driver, like, hey, I, hey man, I'm really, really struggling. I just had a breakup. Do you have any advice for me? And he was like, sweetie, there is a wonderful book out there. It has all the answers that you need to know. And it's called the Quran. <laughs> it's called the Quran. And uh, Muhammad is right. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I've been praying five times a day for a fat ass, so... <laughs> Which is granted, right? The money maker is here. Uh, okay, here's the thing. I, 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 do think, I do think I brought this breakup on myself, though. I should have seen it coming. Should have seen it coming. I, uh, so I'm a graphic designer, which means I've always been the friend that people go to if they want uh, someone to Photoshop their exes out of their Christmas card picture. <laughs> you guys been in that position. And I've always done it, like I've been the go-to person, whatever, cold, heartless, just cut it out, whatever. <laughs> and that, I think it's no, it, what goes around comes around, you know what I mean? I'm the one being broken up with. Like that's what you get for playing God, right? <laughs> I don't know, I had it coming. Uh, okay, oh, here, here's my, my uh, I've been trying to rebrand. I've been trying to rebrand since the breakup. I, uh, I've been trying to come, come across as more of like a, like a bubbly person. <laughs> uh, it's kind of great because, I don't know, this is, people tell me this a lot. They're like, oh, I, Andrea, I love how deadpan you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm people that, it is weird because like in my mind, I am, Emoting right <laughs> So I've been trying to really lean into like, oh, who could a different version of myself be, right? Who could I be? Um, I've been trying to rebrand myself where it counts to the, the, the Google algorithm. So I'll type in stuff and search, which is like totally against my vibe, right? To throw them off my tracks. Uh, the other day was I searching, uh, uh, bulk ammunition, where to buy? <laughs> where to buy? <laughs> but they're smart, they know I'm like an Asian woman, Bush, Bushwick, millennial. <laughs> so they give me like, I don't know, Hello Kitty, AK-47, or whatever. <laughs> Is that a funny joke? I don't know, you guys are fun, thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> give it for Andrew, everybody, the emotional comedy. So it's wrong? Is it wrong? Ah, fantastic. Give it up, give it up for Andrea Wing, everybody. Amazing. Are you, Andrea, are you doing any shows coming up? I, I am. I host. I, I host an Asian show. Asian people and white people are welcome. It's at Silk Road Cafe on March 16th. <laughs> give it up for Andrea one more time, everybody. That was hilarious. The comedy style is. We have so many great acts, I cannot wait. We have Layla Chikalina, you are on deck. We have Marie Christine, Pemberkin, McGuire, Tanasha G, Ari G, Tarek. Can we get Trish Grisafi up on this, on this anti-president's day? Give it up for Trish, everybody. Trish Grisafi, I think she's coming. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, make yourselves at home, there's some seats. You can come in and check it out up here. Give it up for Trish. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, I'm Trish. Um, I have a book coming out. Woo! Woo! It's up for pre-order now. 
uh, you can go to White Stag, and um, I'm going to read some selections from that book, and I hope you check it out. All right. See my, my old papers. Okay. Sleeping with the Wolf Man. This is not about chest hair. I did that last year with a financial analyst down on Fulton Street. While he snored, I swiped sleep from my eyes and discovered just how animal men really are when they don't wax or shave or submit to electrolysis. electrolysis. I joked to my coworkers that I had cut a lock to forever lock in my locket because I am big on sentimental keepsakes like that. I once used Nair on an ex-boyfriend who tried to sodomize me with a cell phone. I cried while I slathered on the noxious ooze, hoping it would burn his skin. I left it on long enough. He said it was a damn poor job and that he could have done better. Cell phones were smaller uh, back then. <laughs> A kick dog cannot praise your olive loaf or doctoral thesis. When you flick a cigarette on them, they cannot say, I've never seen more flawless skin. Once a girl made fun of me, so I endlessly brushed her hair. A famous writer sneered I was lucky to be here, and I licked her feet instead of lopping them off. When I need you to like me, I will do anything. Roll over, fetch, play, dead. Keeper, for Emily Bronte. This Ooh. is her dog's name, if, anyone, if anyone's a Bronte fan here. We would have taken him away from Emily and he would have died. Can you imagine his eyes slapped shut, pawing at the window? He is mine, she said, and it was like the Bible. No one knows how a dog picks a person. In the New Jersey Pet Smart, mine lay on my legs. He was scared his whole life, but so was I. <laughs> Lilies. Yeah. The morning after, you put me in a taxi with a bouquet of wilted orange lilies and a plastic bag of my own vomit. It was then that I suspected you were not in love with me anymore. <laughs> the space was further than across town where you were living with two lesbians and an art history professor. I took the train to Ravenna wandered in and out of the same courtyard until I sat on the steps of Dante's mausoleum. All I could think of was of Ugolino's molars gnashing at Ruggieri's brain, the back of his skull a soggy pulp from being consumed for all eternity. It was a shitty deal. How they tried to steal Dante's corpse during a midnight raid and take it back to Florence, where you claimed to be copying Rosso Fiorentino frescoes, but are really pulling strands of my hair from your brush and flushing them down the toilet. I wrote this after watching Criminal Minds. <laughs> Hostage negotiations. In the gas station of your rape, I demand seven bottles of Jack Daniels at gunpoint. You lay bleeding in the aisle underneath corn chips and queso. I love your face, the sad curve of your bottom lip, the purple bruise at the base of your throat. I put that there. I put so many things on you. Now we're here to kill your father and everything will be okay. Thank you. Give it for Trish, everybody. Trish Bissaki, so you have a book, you said. Okay. Do you want to spiel about the book? We'd love to hear about it. I, I would love to shill. Um, White Stag Publishing, you can check it out. My book is called Animal, and it's available for pre-order. It is my first book, and I'm 41 years old. Beautiful. We love that work. Give it up one more time for the poetry of Trish Wasabi that was freaking phenomenal.
We loved it. That was fantastic here at the KD University Community College, Easy Paradise Community College. Thank you all for coming out. We're, we're, we, we're just getting started with the amazing, amazing literature. We have Marie Christine Hewer on deck. We have Pemberton McGuire. It's anti-President's Day, okay? It was anti-Valentine's Day. We don't believe in it anymore, okay? We're, we need to change it. So we're anti, it's three day, we're taking our labor back, everybody. We're taking it, we're, we're reclaiming our power here tonight, everybody. We have, so Marie Christine, you are a deck, Pemberton McGuire, you're after that, Tanasha G, R.A.G, Tara Galvin, and more. Can we get Layla Chicolina? We are very excited. Layla, are you out there? Give us a, some kind of sign of life. All right, maybe next time. We love it. You're on the, we'll see you next time. All right, so Pemberton McGuire, you are on deck. Can we get the amazing Marie Christine? One of our favorites here, I think. Is she back? Yes! She, we we are so blessed. We haven't had Marie Christine on the show in a while. Everybody give it up for the amazing Marie Christine. Okay, I had to make a mad rush to the cafe a few blocks away because I lost my notepad and my work that I was going to read to you tonight. Maybe it's a sign. Maybe I should not read. Maybe I should, no, maybe I should just have a moment of silence. Maybe I should just pose you the question. How do you feel about what's happening around us and in the world? Tell me. Shout it out. How do you feel about what's happening around us and in the world? Yes. Shout it out! Shout it out! Yeah, exactly! Exactly! So, since 2017, silence! Since 2017, until 2000, and. I almost. <laughs> wow, I forget my notepad, I forget <laughs> what I am about to say, it all goes Woo. like this, yeah. oh no, <laughs> and then life is beautiful, <laughs> it's amazing when you start to forget, Life is kind of beautiful. Yeah. However, I want to tell you a few of the sentences that I have gathered since 2017, posing the question to the people, how do you feel about what's happening around us and in the world? And here it is, hashtag speechless. Flower over the year, love, love, does it matter? The world needs a hug. What are we leaving behind for our children? Question everything, resist, fact checking. What a mess, a nightmare. I can't remain quiet, beyond angry. Too much violence, not enough love. Love is love. Go and find some, said the wise man in the bodega. Blah, blah, blah. It gets worse before it gets better. It gets worse before it gets better. Contemplation, longing, but we have the music. Is this tall enough for you? Is this tall enough for you? I almost. Where is our humanity? Free the children, their words, our words, a litany of hashtag children, children, children. The world is unraveling. The world is music. Imagine a woman coming now toward us. She plays the violin and it goes like this. Do, 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 do. Music, forgetting, 
for giving that we have the music. We are all refugees in this world, migrant, emigrant, alien, free the children, their world, bleeding, division, parting, loaded with tears, making granola. Loaded with tears, oblivion, <laughs> distraction, full of sunshine and laughter. I told you I forget everything. Short supply of what? Water? Please keep breathing. Friendship, love. Wishing a better world for our children. Imagine, imagine, imagine peace. Ooh, 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 ooh. Human rights, women's rights, mother earth, distress of the brutality, evolving spiritual evolution, spiritual evolution. It gets better before it gets worse. Before it gets better, it gets worse. I said this already. More de compassion, worried about breathing. Speak up, amor e mio. Do you still hear the music? The world is scary. People are scary. Even the people close to me are scary. I think the world is angry. The world is big complex and full of possibility. Hashtag love, hashtag peace. Your voice. Speak up, amor e mio. One, two, three, stop. Give it up for the amazing Marie Christine, everybody. Wow. That was phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you for that important... Give it up one more time for that important and beautiful message. That's phenomenal. Yes. Yes. We are getting amazing... We contain multitudes here tonight, okay? There's multitudes. We're getting... You know, comedians insulting the audience. We're getting that beautiful healing. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. This democracy of ideas that's happening in this room tonight. It's amazing. So we have Tanasha G. You are on deck. We cannot wait for that. We have Ari G. Tarek, Galvin, Amelia, David Mills, Leon Brown, and more. So much more. It's two drink minimum. Once again, I'm tagging all of the performers on the social media. So. You can experience it on your device as well. Follow Easy Paradise Mag. It, we're, we're Web 3.0 here, okay? okay? So uh, we're moving into the metaverse. The, the open mic is uh, gradually dissolving into the metaverse. So get ready for that. Can we get the amazing Pemberton McGuire? Is that, give it up for Pemberton McGuire, everybody. Hi guys, it's me, Pemberton Wire. <laughs> Isn't that fucking crazy? <laughs> Ever heard that one? I'm not a comic. I'm not a comic, I'm just nervous. <laughs> um, I haven't done an open mic since I think I was six years old. <laughs> you, can, you can tell I'm a fucking novice because I'm going to be reading this off of my phone. <laughs> I am, um, I'm a visual artist and I, I wrote this about what it was like to start drawing um, nude figures um, from your life. Um, which was actually a really interesting experience, so here we go. I drew a naked woman for the first time when I was 18 years old. I signed myself up for a figure drawing class at my high school, and I was uh, one of three students who attended. They asked me to confirm that I was in fact 18 years old, and they asked for my parents' signature, um, and you would think that like one would cancel the other out, but you know, so I, I forged my mom's signature, um, not because she wouldn't approve, but because this whole process had already felt like too much effort for an experience I desperately needed to feel casual. I needed this to feel independent. 
I needed to be a fucking adult for once, and how the hell was I supposed to achieve that? while waving a permission slip at my legal guardian for some mildly erotic extracurricular activity, you know, like the fucking wrestling team or something. <laughs> by no means was I intimidated by nakedness itself, but rather that unyielding kind of vulnerability that even pornography never held a candle to. The eye contact, watching the way someone breathes, seeing how a body changes when it's cold, and all of this made more grotesque by the fact that this was someone I did not even know. She had short brown hair and really, really small breasts, which was horrible, because I then immediately started to project onto this woman, this complete fucking stranger, and it felt so unfair, and I felt so fucking guilty, and I couldn't figure out why. And I'm adding this part because it's important, but she was beautiful. And she made me feel beautiful. And I'm sad I never thanked her for that because I think even if I could have in the moment, I would have thrown up on the floor. From where I sat, she was lit from behind by a huge white sky and windows and a tall, all-white room. It was blinded and sacred. And I couldn't handle it, so I told myself she wasn't a person. I explained it to myself so meticulously that she was only lines and shadows and pretty soon I stopped seeing the way she breathed and the color of her toenail polish. I stopped wondering what her name was. And after when people asked me, well, what was it like? I told them confidently that it was nothing special at all, like drawing a still life, like drawing a landscape. I could not confess to them that some stupid, primal, rotten part of my brain made my hands sweat, made me blur her body in the clouds of gray lead. I remember the way she put on her robe with an almost undetectable urgency, and I felt like we were both drowning. College gutted me emotionally, but I felt myself becoming an artist at the same time, a real artist. I inserted myself into spaces where the word body slowly became the word anatomy, genuinely scientific and cold. The rooms became even brighter, the windows larger, the sky became impossibly whiter. I began to understand how all of this worked. My professor told me my drawings were, uh, they seriously lacked refinement and I adored the feeling of inadequacy. The bodies I drew became older and more personal. We once had a 45 minute lecture discussing the intricacies of a human ball sack. <laughs> and I took very thorough notes. <laughs> I recall the wrinkles of a truly ancient man. I saw him for the first time while I was between classrooms and terribly unprepared. He was barefoot wearing nothing but faded blue boxers that hung on his asymmetrical hips with a belt of suspense. He was Goya's Saturn before me. Looking to my peers, I searched for the mutual confusion that surely must have been in their eyes, but I could not find it. They were unfazed by this phantom, and he did not give a fuck about us. A model pacing the halls between drawing section sessions, he looked right through me, through us, focused only on his pilgrimage, he was a complete and unrelenting human, yet I was lost in the sunlight that fell upon his ribs. Thank you. Look at the Pemberton McGuire, everybody. Wow. That was very powerful. Thank you for that beautiful reading. That's, really, that's the first of them you've done since you're six years old? Wow. You must have been incredible at six years old. Give it up for Pemberton. What a great name. Is that published anywhere? No, not yet. All right, where somebody publishes. Come on, that's what we're here for. Get this. Give it up one more time for Pemberton Woo! McGuire and that very powerful reading. That was beautiful. All right, we have so much good literature. Check it out on Instagram. Check it out in the metaverse. Uh, it's anti-President's Day. We are, we are disavowing any association with the presidency, and we are reclaiming the... Uh, yeah, the, we're taking the money, we're switching the money from the military industrial complex and the National Endowment for the Arts, okay? So $800 billion is going to the writers and the poets, okay? You guys, we're, we're redistributing the wealth here tonight. That's right, we're rich, we're, we're rich! <laughs> Alright, so, 
Let's take that money and run. We have R.A.G. on deck. We have Tarek. Coming up after that, we have Galvin, Amelia, David Mills, and more. Eric Hurdle. Can we get... Oh, my God. This next artist, we are so stoked to have back. She does these amazing videos that are, like, titanic theme sometimes. And we just love it. Can we give it up for Tanasha G? I think she may even have... Here. Alright. Um, I think I might do the stand stand standing mic. Okay. Just so I won't be too um Hello everyone, thank you for having me. Woo! Um so this song is a song that maybe presents a more hopeful view, but it's just about like, you know, being a human in the midst of all this you know, S-H-I-T, that's going <laughs> on everywhere. Um, I guess I can say shit. <laughs> um, also, uh, I'm filming a music video for this particular song that I'm going to perform on Sunday. Um, and, I, and I'm looking for anyone to dance. It's basically going to be like a love train crossing like around the city. I'm going to have an amp and a backpack. And everyone's just going to be dancing all around the city. Um, across the Williamsburg Bridge and then taking the train back and just dancing everywhere. Woo. So I'm looking for people to come and just dance. So anyway, if anyone wants to come, come see me after. Um. <laughs> if you like the song, I mean, you might not like it. <laughs> it's kind of... Okay, okay, never mind, let's go. <laughs>
Yes, yeah, the 25th. Oh, what time? 3 p.m. at the walking, and we're gonna walk across the bridge. Which side? Um, the Manhattan side, sorry, that's important. <laughs> Thank you, that would be amazing. Tell all your friends. I mean, yeah. Woo. Go, go be a Tanasha cheese musically. Oh, hell yeah, that was amazing. Maybe Leo will be there. Who knows? Maybe Leonardo Cappy will be involved in some way. I hope. Oh, actually, I don't know. I heard he's a creep. Yeah, exactly. We don't need him. We we are gonna be there. We'll be dancing. Hell yeah. That is so amazing that you. Thank you for the open call. That is phenomenal. What a great song. Give it up for Tanasha G, everybody. The new president, the new president. I'm writing in Tanasha G. That was so, in case you forgot, that was so hooky and dope. Give it up one more time for Tanasha G. Phenomenal. I'm gonna do that, because that was so good. I'm gonna play that. That's the good, that's the, like, ringing the bell at Trader Joe's or Arby's or whatever. All right, so we have uh, Tarek, Tarek Blumen, you're on deck. Galvin, the amazing Galvin. After that, Amelia, David Mills, Leon Brown, and more. This next poet hosts an open mic at Pete's Candy Store. It's the third Thursday, fourth Thursday of every month. She's amazing. She's a great poet. We are so stoked to have the amazing R.A.G. Give it up for R.A.G. Thank you for the marvelous plug. And that's actually this Thursday. Woo! We do a theme just to like be weird. You don't have to follow the theme, but um, this week or this month is Sesame Street because fuck Valentine's Day. Am I right? Almost better. Um, yeah, so you, sh you guys should come out. You can uh, DM me on my, my account for the mic, which is literally just Secret Peaks and sign up. It's very chill, it's mellow, come bring like your worst poetry, it's great. Um, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna sing a song first and then if there's time I'll do a short poem. Um, this song is from Phantom of the Opera, but it's not the phantom you're thinking from, you're th thinking of, it's the Maury Yeston Phantom, which is the secondary worst phantom, but, but the song is really good. All right, let's see how this goes. I guess I should say, this is like the woman who runs the opera company. This is like the old one who's like, Christine is so young, what a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Where does the time fly? Simply few few hours in the day. What diva's work is never done No relief, no time for fun Not if the diva has to run An opera company Every small detail to supervise Every pretty face to scrutinize I plan me this opera company Why take on this arduous chore Sleepless nights I pace across my bedroom floor Why do I live completely for This opera company
I will burn, I will scheme, I will realize my dream, because if I'm not in a light, I'm incomplete. And the best part, I'm just coming to have the law applaud for you know who. I can't believe I'm here, and this is my career. It must be seen like a torch, we'll engrave it on the porch, like an edict, like a beacon, like a sign. This place is <laughs> It's a little weird, but, but, but I feel I heard, guys. All right. One shortish poem, and then I will be out of your hair. Oh, it's, uh, can you be <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> yeah, fuck you then. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not so it's fine. Um, all right, poem. People will mark you like a dog pissing on the street without ever meaning to stay. The fire hydrant may flood you, but the wary might also wash away. I dreamt I was a spider and you cut off all my legs. I had no tap shoes left to lose, no nails to heal through wood. I danced when I was told to, my flesh molded to make. Controlled loss of self is normal when democracy is God only in name. People don't think like villains, there isn't enough time in the day. The pretense of holy morality is false, we all eat our young anyway. I dreamt that people were smarter, but I was unloved all the same. The mating dance had ended long before my waltz had played. Is this the day of turning? Is this the only way? I've become the housewife that can never go home, self as son, self as God, self as mate. I want a place with actual things, concrete statues like people and dreams, but that submarine sank 3,000 miles away. The reckoning will not rapture us with lead. Each life is held as a precious gift, yet each one is foremost of decay. Good children do as they're told. It's hard and it's showing up each day. I no longer wish to participate in a republic of bigoted waste, but the dog has already peed on my shoes and I guess now I'll just have to stay. I think the deli on North Fifth closed. My neighborless coffee is aloof and sweet. No one to give my hand-me-downs a home. Oh well, you'll see. The train and I both have the shakes. Just find the entrance to my heart. I think it was back two blocks east and change. My body's a corrupt republic and now it's a monument to restless hate. With a train car underwater and spiders preparing to mate as the tap shoes waltz in the submarine and the housewife roasts her young on the subway grate. When God is self and self is hate, self-democracy is only a game. When God is self and self is hate, self-democracy is only a game. That felt vaguely presidential. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Give it up for the new president, R.E.G., everybody. Everybody get to be president for five minutes tonight, okay? Woo! It's your executive State of the Union address. Give it up for R.E.G. And that phenomenal, that was a, such a breakthrough. That was like, holy shit, that amazing aria. Give it up for R.E.G., everybody. Woo! Bringing culture, culture into this space. It's like the Met in here all of a sudden. D'Amato Opera House. All right, so we have the amazing Galvin on deck. We have Amelia coming up, David Mills, Norman Salant, Cindy Reed, CJ, and more. Can we get, oh, we need this hilarious comedian, everybody. Give it up, making it. You know him. You love him. He's, he's one of our favorites here. Give it up for Tarek Blumen, everybody. <laughs> Any day spent above ground is a good one. I hate spelunking. <laughs> spelunking's a funny sounding word, isn't it? Like spelunking. Do you know what I thought it was a cool sounding word recently? Bestiality. <laughs> Sounds like a metal band, like bestiality. <laughs> bestiality. Uh, but back to my original point, we are all going to die eventually. <laughs> I wonder though, why are people afraid of it? It's just an inevitability. The one thing that I am afraid about dying though is that people will forget me. So, I make a special effort to be really rude to strangers. <laughs> Which is why I moved to New York City. <laughs> say you were on your deathbed though. How could you be sure that you would look back on your life and say to yourself, yes, I lived a good life. It's kind of difficult, right? Well, one tip I'll share with you is just to lower your standards a bit and you'll enjoy life a lot more. 
Which is why you should be laughing at my bloody jokes. <laughs> I think the thing that freaks people out about dying most of all, though, is you'll stop perceiving and you'll stop seeing. But one benefit of that is you won't have to see me do comedy anymore. <laughs> Unless you end up in hell. <laughs> you know they say, right, free will is an illusion, which is why you've chosen not to find me funny. <laughs> Speaking of a life spent well, I actually spent 10 months of the previous year unemployed. Uh, Newsflash Americans, the immigration office really are protecting your jobs. Own it, buddy! <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but I didn't move to America to be unemployed. I moved to America to feel relatively skinnier. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> You know, one thing I think about America is, for a country that produces so much diarrhea-inducing foods, it's very difficult to find a public restaurant. <laughs> it reminds me of my like, very first interaction with an American in America. I got off the plane, and I asked some dude working at the airport, Hey, do you know where the toilet is? He's like, what? I said, do you know where the toilet is? What? <laughs> oh, you mean the restroom. <laughs> No, of course, the other fucking toilets you have around. You dense idiot. Uh, but I like living in New York, though. One thing I like about living in New York is you can download library books directly to your Kindle. So now, instead of going to the library, I masturbate at home. <laughs> I didn't enjoy my 10 months spent unemployed, though, because I felt like I didn't spend my time productively enough. You know, in all that 10 months, I failed to learn Ebonics on Duolingo. <laughs> you think with a name like Tariq, I'd be a natural at that, but no. <laughs> yeah, 10 whole months, I felt like a bum with an Ivy League education. And all that means is, when I wiped my ass with my degree, it gave me a rash. <laughs> when I was unemployed, I had a lot of time to walk my dog. Uh, my dog picked up an injury, I took him to the vet. And the first thing the vet said to my dog was, Oh, poor baby, did you get hurt? I said, Ma'am, please don't patronize my dog. <laughs> the second thing the vet asked was, Was your dog bitten by another dog? I said, No, this is New York City. He was bitten by a homeless person. <laughs> you know, the good thing about owning a dog is you don't have to do the dishes anymore. Like, I just leave the plates on the floor and the dog licks them clean, ready for reuse. <laughs> Yeah, the reason I have a dog now is because I actually got married last year. Yeah. Now that I'm married, I take it upon myself to give unsolicited advice to all of my single friends. That advice is, go with an open mind. It'll happen when you least expect it. And have an immigration crisis. <laughs> yeah, uh, I enjoy being married to my wife. One thing that uh, does worry me about being married to an American is, what is she going to do when she stops finding the accent cute? <laughs> we were hanging out at home once and my wife farted and she blamed it on me. Now that is what I call gaslighting. <laughs> yeah, my wife got mad at me recently because um, one of those like Instagram thirst trap bots, you know, with the women in bikinis started commenting on my posts. And I said to her, oh, it, it's just a bot, it's just a robot, it's nothing to worry about. And she said, oh, is that what you're into? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks very much. Please go for Matt Proctor. Give it up for Carrot. I didn't even have to light him or anything. He just went willingly. It's fantastic. Give it up for Carrot. <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, we, we love it. We love. Do you like America? How do you like the United States? It sucks, right? I like it. It's okay. All right. All right. Yeah, it's okay. All right. Give it up for one more time for Terry, everybody. All right. So we have the amazing Mia, Amelia on deck. We have David Mills coming after that. Norman Salant, Cindy Reed, then Kuzu Daddy has prepared a special medley of all his greatest hits. So you don't want to miss that. We are, oh my god, one of the best, we get the best writers. I mean, it's KGB Bar, we, ha we don't even, you have to have, you have to apply, you have to submit, and you know, it's like an MFA program, so we're super excited to have this next writer, one of the best poets. You've got to get their book, it's available at The Strand, it's available all over the place. Can we get Galvin up? Give it up for Galvin, everybody, one of our favorites. 
I, uh, so one of the, a very, very funny comedian earlier mentioned uh, President Taft. <laughs> and I remembered a fucking hilarious thing that happened to you. Uh, maybe like eight years ago, this woman uh, uh, courted me, if you will, with a series of erotic poems involving President Taft. <laughs> And I thought I would never have any reason to mention that to anyone. So you're a very privileged audience tonight. <laughs> I still don't know what the fuck to make of that. Uh, we wound up exchanging poems and sort of workshopping each other's poems, but she keeps sending me these sexy Taft poems, and I was like, what are you wanting me to do? I actually asked her at one point, like, do you want me to, like, dress up or, <laughs> uh, or put a pillow under my, I don't know. I, I never did figure it out. <laughs> but she was a talented poet, except for those weird-ass sexy president poems. <laughs> anyway, happy President's Day! Woo! From me! And I'm going to be reading at the palace, uh, the Palace Reading Series on April 16th. Woo! Write your, uh, uh, mark your calendar if you like this bullshit. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, this is called When Your Parents Are Toilets. <laughs> you put two toilets on your feet and tap dance until you have a popular traveling act called the Dancing Toilet Review. At the moment of the show when the toilets finally crumble, the entire audience feels catharsis they can't explain and spontaneously pees all over themselves. A brand of adult diaper is created to deal with the phenomenon and then your life has value in the eyes of society. That's a poem. Woo! This is called, uh, How to Ask Someone on a Date. I hate when from a distance, someone looks like a beautiful naked woman. But as they approach, you see they're a 12-year-old in a flesh-colored bodysuit who has come to hold your hand while you die. This has never happened to me. But I've seen it happen to you at least twice. You screamed for so long both times. You screamed until I was impressed. Uh, this one's called uh, Being Present. You can practice mindfulness by focusing on things in your immediate vicinity like that vacant house across the street that was the first place you saw an enema. <laughs> or that hydrangea bush on the corner that was the second place you saw an enema. <laughs> and you can dance. You can dance if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. Because your friends don't dance, and if they don't dance, then they're no friends of mine. <laughs> uh, this one's called The Ringer. Shut up. <laughs> a lot of women put me through the ringer before I met you. The ringer was a fat suit from a theater company surplus sale with chopstick glued all over it. I think it was supposed to be a pine cone costume. Two or three women would show up on my doorstep and wrestle me into this tube of foam and chopsticks and pass me back and forth through it until they were bored. But not you, because you designed the costume. It was funny to you that I thought it was meant to be a pine cone. Thank you. I'm, so all of these poems you just heard, my last publisher was uh, Black Ocean. Uh, but I'm wanting to have a publisher around here, so if anybody you know want to publish this book, come up to me. Also, April 16th, I am doing the Palace Reading Series.
Come check it out. I will have new horrors to unfold. <laughs> The Master, give it up for Galvin, everybody. Check that out at the Palace Reading Series. We gotta get that book. Get the book, publish the book. Phenomenal, some of the best poetry you're gonna hear. Is that magical realism? Oh my God, give the Nobel Prize to Galvin. That's what I say, that's what I say. The MacArthur, the Nobel, the, 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 uh, the Goog. The Oscar, the Palme d'Or. The EGOT, Galvin wins the EGOT. All right, my God, we have so much talent. David Mills, you are on deck. Norman Salant, Cindy Reed, Kuzu Daddy, Leon Brown, CJ, Eric Hartle, Arena Sincara, Victor Davila, Angel Lugo, and more. We have so much talent, it's amazing. Thank you guys for chilling. It's, we're partying so hard, it's two drink minimum here on anti Press Day. Oh my God, we're so excited about this next writer. She's one of the best. We're very lucky. Anytime she wants to come out and read, ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Listen closely to the amazing Amelia. Give it up for Amelia. So I know that we're all anti-Valentine's Day, and Woo. I swear I am too, but I, <laughs> I, like it. I do have a belated Valentine's Day poem to read. Woo. Since you came into my life, you've been everywhere. A snack in the middle of the day, dime square at dusk. For everything, there is a time and place, but for you, there is neither, obscured by a cloud of bright orange and dark blue. You brought back toothpaste from Lisbon because I told you to. The drop of a dime. I want to have you in my room at night, in my chest. I want to meet you at the diner, your film camera wrapped around an old chore coat, drinking black coffee as though there is nothing wrong with me. Three Santa Barbara omelets and the taste of soft embarrassment. What can I do besides write about you, peer into Gallery Rouge, and guess your desires? Understand my own. The sun rises, a sickly purple, a bus hurdles up Fifth Avenue. I lose track of the slope of our line. With two more months of permission, all our ambiguous words, I eye your hands, the ampersands, I take the ride. Woo! Um, and then I have one more that I started writing in November and then just finally finished earlier this week. Yeah. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Nobody knows how to dress in 60 degree weather in November. Nobody knows how to care, how to take care, how to date in an apocalypse. Everyone is pregnant or planning opulent weddings. <laughs> he bought a ring, she said. I fell deep into the concrete bed beneath me. I killed my yearning for life with a bout of frankincense. I had the good sense to cut ties, but then returned and re-sewed them, making them even thicker than before, embroidered by the floss of my own delusion. In my house, there was often no one there to explain the winter and why it made the world cry. In my house, we bumped elbows shyly, we crumbled with pride. I'd love to hear more about your poetry, he said, standing on a Turkish rug, the person beside him always laughing as if he were the sun, singed feathers of me. I always do this. Left-handed poet, too drunk to answer, too drunk too often, ending the night with her head in the toilet once again. Cannot charm, cannot please or win, what a poet. I mistook your foot for the table, rested too much weight on it. Turned involuntarily red when you moved, baby pink all afternoon, iridescent, like your aura. How to look into the face of a desire that will go likely nowhere. I'll write verse about you in the shower, as I did when I was 20 and in love with an idea for the last time. How I treasured what was unreal, long ago, clandestine. Now beneath retinals and SPF, I see my face growing old in front of my eyes. Eyes that are accompanied by small oceans of lines, but turn green with the same old desire. All my life I wished to grow taller, stretch further, to see the tops of trees and their roots at once. My root chakra's burnt out, I walk around on clouds, always wondering what comes next. Play the game of work, of love, of what coat to wear in a warm November. Nobody knows how to dress in 60 degree weather at any time of year. Soon March will come and we'll, we'll wear jackets quilted in confusion, layer under layer, tears full of tears. Thank you. And then, the cannot charm, please, or win, what a poet, is Frank O'Hara. Oh. Give it up for Amelia. We love the Frank O'Hara references. Anytime, anytime, give it up. Give it up. The iridescent aura, the dime square sunsets. It's all there, everybody. The cinematic poetry. And we, for the record, we love love here, okay? We love Valentine's Day. We support it. We're pro-love. But... Not the corporate uh, the lobby and the consumerization of love, okay? The packaging of love by Madison Avenue and the, the big greeting card lobby. Big hallmark. All right, so anyway, 
just, you know, we're campaigning tonight. Give it up one more time for Amelia. That's fantastic. We have it. Yes, we have Norman Salant on deck, Sydney Reed, Kuzer Daddy, Leon Brown, CJ, Eric Hurdle, Arena, Sid Cara, and more, Victor Davila. I'm very excited about this next act. Uh, I, I think we're going to get a monologue. So get ready for We love monologues. We love talking. It's David Mills in the house. Give it up for David Mills. Thank you. Give it up Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm new to New York. Anyone else new to New York? Yeah, you're I, new. Yeah, I'm new. I'm new. Everybody was at some point. I, I just think New Yorkers are so cool, you know. So I'm, I'm trying to do like New York. I'm trying to go hang out with New Yorkers hang out, you know. So <laughs> spending all my time at Hudson Yards, right? <laughs> so cool, right? So cool. Isn't it cool? I love the vessel. I love the vessel, the vessel, you know, the I love the vessel, the big shawarma, right? I love the vessel. But here, wait, here's my question about the vessel, right? Here's my question. Do you think, right, do you think people went to Hutchin Yards with the intention of climbing the vessel and jumping off, or, or did they go to Hutchin Yards, climb the vessel, look around, lose the will to live, and then jump off? You know what I mean? Like, ten dollars. That's what costs to go up the vessel, ten dollars. Seems expensive. I mean, you could throw yourself in front of the A train for two ninety. So <laughs> weird, right? Very excited about Dune. Dune, right? Dune, Dune. Anyone who saw the first one, Dune, right? Dune, Dune, Dune. Dune. I loved it. Did they one or it? No, no, no. My dear, the new one, Dune, Dune. If you didn't see it, if you didn't see it, wait a minute. If you didn't see it, if you didn't see it. Focus. If you didn't see it, if you didn't see it, hold on. And hold on, if you didn't see it, it's the story of Timothy Chalamet, T. Shal, right? T. Shal. Plays a sexually ambiguous princeling from the planet of leave-in conditioner, okay? And he, he and his family colonize the desert planet. I was on the edge of my seat, you know what I mean? I, everyone was in suspense. We were wondering, will the hairstyle survive the harsh climate? You know? <laughs> Spoiler alert, get stronger. <laughs> Finds a new texture. Finds a new texture. I love these. I love these big blockbusters because they're super internet. They need to be global hits, right? So they cast it with like an international cast, right? So you get this weird future of all these accents, right? There's always like so the stars, always some American with some random American accent. All the Brits, right? You get the high, super, you know, the, like the posh Brit plays like the, the witch, you know. But then like the the Scot, you know, there's always a Scot in the mix. All the villains are sort of Eastern European. Increasingly, there's some sort of Asian, Chinese, maybe like a South American. Somehow, no one from New Jersey makes it into the future. <laughs> right. Here's another moment. Isn't it pretty? Isn't it pretty? So that's southeast, that way. That way. That, you came from New York? That You must have come from there. That's southeast. Yeah. Oh, wait. You want a cigarette? Yeah, we don't smoke. John and me, we don't smoke, but um, somehow a, 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 carton of, uh, a, a carton got thrown into the cart, the last mad dash he did through the supermarket. You know, he just grabbed what he could. Grape juice, beef jerky, honey, tuna, crackers, ground beef, pita bread, bags of pita bread. Do you like pita bread? <laughs> and a carton of Marlboro Clears. We don't even smoke. See where the trees are over there? All grown up. Wasn't like that when we got here. Now even in winter, when the leaves go, you still can't see the road. I'm amazed you found us. <laughs> You must be one of those who's good with directions. I'm terrible with directions. And also, me and John, we put every single thing in our phones. A lot of good that does us now, right? We lost everything. Contact numbers, photos, important dates, information. Everything wiped away. It was terrifying. You're not a phone person, you don't know, but it was terrifying. And liberating. All that down there, that field, 
the next few months that'll go black and grow over, that'll die before the snow comes. Theo, Theo used to love running down there like a madman, running around in circles all day long without a toy or a bone or anything, just happy to be alive. We had to eat him a few months back. <laughs> well, we had no choice. There really was almost nothing left, and until John found that abandoned supermarket just in the midst of time, I mean, it's amazing, it's still stocked. Completely pristine, everything still in it, like just before the madness happened. It's isolated, where John found it, almost an hour from here. It'll keep us stocked for the time being. And after that, well, we have cigarettes. <laughs> Later, when the sun goes down over there, you can see the faint glow of New York City. Yeah, apparently it's still on fire. <laughs> All these months later, either that or they've restored the power, which seems unlikely. I mean, it must be rubble, right? We could see the bombs falling from here. I am so glad you found us. I've been going completely crazy with absolutely no one to talk to. You too? I'm fascinated to how, how, how you hear, how you survive for so long. How'd you do it? We were lucky, this place had a bunker built in when we bought it. And John's always been a prepper. <laughs> we spent the first two months underground, just rode out the anarchy. When we finally came out, the only people left were horribly disfigured and damaged from radiation, I guess. And John's a sharpshooter from the first, war, from the first Gulf War, so as soon as anyone came on the property, then boom! <laughs> Our biggest challenge was keeping Theo away from the corpses. When John saw you emerge from the forest in the back, he told me he was going to shoot you, but then you just collapsed. I convinced John to bring you in, let you rest. We have tons of space. But John was wary. Still is. Another mouth to feed, he said, but I reminded him, also another pe person to help keep the place up, keep it tidy, to work the garden, fight back intruders. You seem so strong. No visible radiation poisoning. Took a moment, but I was able to convince John. I can be very persuasive. I think you should stay. We've got enough food. For now. Cigarette? Isn't it pretty? Thank you. So do you do shows or anything, or where can we see us? Uh, just uh, Instagram, David Mills Department. We're in the David Mills Department, everybody. Give it up for David Mills. That was, that was monologuist. We love monologuist. We love witty repartee. No Coward, whatever No Coward does. Do that here. We love patter songs. We love what R.E.G. did with the amazing opera. It's all a cappella. It's all exploring the spectrum here. Give it up one more time for the hilarious David Mills and that beautiful monologue. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, so we have Cindy Reed. You are on deck. Kuzu Daddy has, has special holiday medley for everyone. Leon Brown after that. CJ, Eric Hartle, Arena, Sid Cara, Victor Devla, Angel Lugo, Max Zorn, Nathan Aberg, Luke Herberman, and more, so much more. We are so excited about this next act. I am actually doing a show uh, with this next act on Wednesday at Jefferson Market Library at 6 p.m. It's an amazing for our friend Monique's magazine that's coming out. Lonesome, come check it out. It's free. We're super stoked to have him. Everybody, give it up for the great Norman Salant. The great Norman Salant. Everybody. Woo! Yeah. Haven't been here in a while. I'm really happy to be back. Woo. I love this place. Yeah. So I'm gonna play just one song. It's uh, it's, it's new. Woo. So I'm just kind of airing it out, checking it out, see how it goes. It's called Have You Ever. 
Norman so land everybody. I don't he didn't actually kill a guy, right? I mean <laughs> Right? That's a it's a fiction. It's like long black veil or something. It's like a it's a murder ballad. Right? That's that's a thing. How fucked up is that? Murder ballads, only in this country. Yeah, they're great. I mean they're it's raising the stakes, everybody. We ha it's the ultimate, yes, exactly. There's nothing more satisfying a song then um, what's that no that's okay I'm listening I'm interacting with the audience okay this is a two-way open mic everybody the mic, that's right all right yeah we're keeping it going okay so we have Kuzu Daddy Kuzu Daddy you were on deck Leon Brown CJ Eric Hartle Arena Sid Cara Victor Davila Angel Lugo Max Zord 
is Cindy Reed in the house? All right, let's get Cindy Reed up, everybody. Give it up. Give it up for Cindy Reed. grind right trying to make our dreams come true so that's kind of what this song is about uh, it's a new release it's called Everfessent Light and I only put it on SoundCloud for now Cindy Reed, everybody. Give it over Cindy Reed. Oh, super dope. Do you have that on SoundCloud or anything? Can we get that on the internet at all? Uh, yeah. Cindy, Cindy Reed. Yes. It's, just, it's Cindy Reed, and on Instagram, I'm at Destin.Cindy6. Cindy Alright, check out Cindy Reed on Instagram, everybody. That's super dope. That was kind of like Ace of Base. I felt like kind of an Ace of Base vibe. Alright. We're going to keep it rolling. We have one of our most special acts. He's prepared a special President's Day medley, everybody. Give it up for the one, the only, Kuzu Daddy. Yeah. Okay, Matt. How did KGB do him tonight? Okay, but I need a few, few seconds. I have to put my sexy sunglasses on. And I'm not a gay. <laughs> Okay, how do I look now? All right, we're gonna play ten original songs in five minutes. Okay, are you ready? Woo! I have to move around. So, okay, maestro. Woo! Okay, I have enough place to move. Let the weird things go now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.
Five minutes. Yeah. That was amazing. Give it up one more time for Kuzu Daddy. Yeah. Check him out. We're doing open mics all over town. We're taking New Jersey soon. We'll be on Long Island. Check it out. All right, we have CJ on deck. We have Eric Hardle coming up. Arena, Sid Carl, Victor Davila, Angel Lugo, Max Orton. Thank you all for coming out. Come on in. I think there's some seating over here. We're very excited about this next act. Is Leon Brown? Can we get Leon Brown? Give it up for one of our favorites here. The great Leon Brown joining us again here. I'm gonna turn that window off in just one second. Keep it up for Leon. My friend Peter would begin every story by saying, I distinctly remember. I distinctly remember. And then when he had you, Peter would distinctly forget what the point was. He told me once how he'd met a guy at a psych ward that told him he was a reporter. That he'd been working there undercover and become trapped. Trinity Square, Lloyds Avenue. Narrow sidewalks full of bank clerks. Civil servants. 
A great flock of flapping nylon suits and plasticky rain jackets from India. Of no consequence to anyone. We stood in a hotel lobby, talked about the work. I'm hearing the words but not seeing the emotion. I briefly considered a counterattack, but it turned out to be true that I just didn't care enough. The best denim is in California. Soldiers dressed as doctors. Did I tell you I've been thinking about growing out my bangs? Have you read Frankel? No, just the thought of it makes me anxious. It's called a Monty. When you outflank, and encircle an enemy. Anyone that ever encircled anything's an asshole. <laughs> the last time I saw my friend Peter, he was drinking. Some of the boys at the bar could take the light from your eyes. And to the east, where the morning is, the sea. And to the west, where the evening is, the sea. It can darken here very suddenly. Thank you. Give it up for Leon Brown, everybody. We love his poetry. Give it up. Are you doing any readings? Do you do readings? Can we check out Leon Brown? Just for you. Fuck yeah, that's what we like. Give it up for Leon Brown, everybody. It's an Easy Paradise exclusive. We love it. That was fantastic. All right, so we have Eric Hartle on deck. We have Arena, Sid Cara, Victor Davila, Angel Lugo, Max Zorn, Nathan Aper, Luke Kerber, and Ann Van Epps. Peter Girl, Natalie, and more. Can we get, oh my god, this guy. Really, he played a Grateful Dead cover last time, so he's in my heart forever. It's CJ, CJ, are you here? He's here. Give it up for CJ. And I think he's, is it his brother? Someone, someone. He'll introduce. Let's get into a two-drink minimum. Thank you all for coming out. But like it's a day off. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Most people Woo! get that. So it's whoever the presidents are. <laughs> All right. <laughs> my name's CJ. My band, my band, Burn the Rain, is playing at the Luncheonette this Thursday. I know. Woo! Pretty excited. I'm not part of that. <laughs> <laughs> this is my friend Alex. Woo! Woo! This is presidents day. We're like, let's just go jam in KGB. So that's what Woo! we're gonna do.
Give it up for CJ. Oh, it's yes. I can't see a thing, can you? Yeah, no, no. Happy President's Day, Pilgrim. <laughs> Playing the official anthem of President's Day. Sympathy for the President. Check them out at the luncheonette on Thursday. Good God, they're playing at the Delancey on 420, people. Yes, yes. Your plans for 420 are already made. Woo, woo! Give it up for CJ and Alex. Thank you. All right, Arena, you are on deck. Sid Cara coming up after that. Victor Davila, Angel Lugo, Max Orr, Nathan Aper, Luke Herberman, Ann Van Epps, right. Peter Girl, Natalie, okay. and so much more, everybody. Thank you for chilling. We are just getting started. Let's get... That was dope as hell. Now we're rocking, everyone. We are rocking here. Let's... Can we get Eric Hartle? Is Eric Hartle... Are you in the house? Yes! Let's get Eric Hartle up, everybody. And then... Uh, I guess I won't go down. Hi, my name is Eric Hartle. I've done this twice before about a year ago. Um, I'm going to read some poems. I guess I do poetry and music from time to time. Um, this first poem was actually published. Um, in a Commonwealth journal, it was a local publication, it was the first volume about last summer. Can't give a specific month, but it's called Next Stop Platt. Um, I don't know, my dad said it was about riding the subway, and I don't know if that's true. Um, for me, it was more just kind of exploring space, so I'm gonna read it. We all find ourselves at times in the vise of an hourglass caught between a fat man and the subway door. Was it worth rushing to feel like a throbbing popcorn kernel? Trains are a great place to dwell because the scenery runs faster than your thoughts. It's like a white collar trick daydreaming. It doesn't really matter where we stop, but that we don't. I like dwelling on maybe more than as if or because, because because doesn't leave room for error. So that was that one. Um, Woo! Is that, this next one, it, it, they're lyrics, um, so I also do music of a new project, it's called Roving the Bride. I'm going to be putting music online on March 28th, um, so you can follow me or talk to me about that where you can find it. Um, the song, it's um, kind of based off a true experience I had. I went on tour with a different project of mine, we ended up in Meridian, uh, Missouri, um, and kind of had a, almost like a kind of romantic experience, so this is me writing about it. We were standing atop Meridian, sun setting orange flames, John smoking and saying, what if New York were just as close to heaven as we are tonight? I didn't really get what he meant by that, but it sounded pretty. I knew in 30 or so minutes, once the sun was down, the hotel guests would be out of here, would be out here at the bar and I had to disappear. But the way John held onto each cigarette drag, those sharp lips and leather eyes lit by the ember flaring at his fingertips, I wanted to watch him glow forever. Don't shit where you eat, they said, they said, but when you work in a slaughterhouse, everything looks like it'll be good in your mouth after some time. It was then I noticed the way John rubbed his fingers along the cheekbones of our last job. Bankers always have the best jawlines, he said, always eating always hungry. I asked him, have you ever eaten a man before? He shined his yellow teeth with a point-to-point -point smile and whispered, we made love after every job since. I told him that I loved him and he looked at me like a dog. The time after that ended in an argument and by the time after now I'll be a hundred miles between Birmingham and John's beautiful body beating blood at the bottom of the boxcar. I can still hear him smile. And that was that one. Um, I'll read um, one more. I just have to pull it up on my notes. Um, oh yeah, this this one's kind of based on um, a, another subway ride I had, where um, I kind of witnessed. I don't know who they were or where they were from, but this uh, older couple and they were very passionately kissing, leaning on the subway door. 
And I, I've encountered a lot of people who are really uncomfortable with PDA, but I think it's pretty awesome. You know, it's, just, it's, it's a totally vulnerable, uncontrolled, uncomfortable experience. So this is sort of me characterizing that. There's no title to this. And she had him pressed against the subway door, crutched tight in her pink spandex thighs. I'm your baby daddy. My autumn leaf, I'd fart Fort Knox if I could, but I'm only worth the receipts in my pocket. Fat wet kisses echo through the subway car, commuters uncomfortable, jealous of lovers, true display of affection. My dear, money means nothing when all I have is your gorilla heart. But cruel as fates thrust, their love coming to a screeching halt as the subway doors part and Monsieur collapses on the piss platform. No time to see, Madame watches the door seal her love away, lost forever. Thank you. 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 You're out there. Okay, maybe next time. All right. Well, let's get Sid Carr up. This this next musician is amazing. We've got a we've got a bass, I think, in the house, everybody. So just give us one sec to get situated. Grab yourself another drink, and we're gonna have some music from Sid Cara and what's the Ananya? Ananya, everybody. Just one sec. songs for y'all tonight. I'm a live looping artist, so I hope you like them. We're going to be playing Pink Frog Cafe in Williamsburg, March 2nd, so if you like what Woo! you hear, give me a follow and come to the show. Yeah. Uh, the first song is called Something Special. I find something I just have in mind 
then he called me up and then we had to stand in line I remember laughing hard to you, I could finally sigh Cause all I ever wanna do is make you laugh and smile But it gets a little hard with every passing mile Just remember in your heart a little fraction's mine You're so special to find So damn special, I remember thinking love, but it's another fucking level. I don't wanna undermine us, I think we're inseparable. I don't wanna light it up no more, it's getting detrimental. I don't wanna play these games, yeah, I've been going kinda mental. I just wanna call and ask how you were doing, how's your fellow? I wish we could move past all the hatred, I'm resentful. I how you move fast, even though I'm the one who sent you. I never meant you, I didn't know what I was in for. I didn't know the world would take everything that you give, so when it did, and I was dead broke. No house and no phone, your heart gave me shelter. I was So when you go and get cold, need something to hold I come and find it, that's so I do hold This one's called Roses. Check them out. What is Pink Tree? When? Uh, Pink Frog Cafe, Williamsburg, March 2nd. And Instagram is Sid Cara, S I D K A R A dot music. Uh, second, like 8 p.m. Hell yeah, check them out at Pink Frog Cafe, everybody. 8 p.m. March 2nd. That was super chill. Lo fi study beats. I loved it. All right, we have. Angel Lugo, you're on deck, Max Zorn, Nathan Aberg, Luke Herberman, Ambient Epps, Peter Girl, John King, Natalie John King, Alex Burmer, Danny Fallon, Riyad Carroll. So many more, so many more. All right, let's get 
this uh, next act is an accomplished poet. I believe tonight they're going to be trying some stand-up comedy. So let's go with them. Let's support them and listen to their beautiful comedy. Give it up for Victor Davila. Victor Davila to the stage. He's going to do some comedy for us. Give it up. Get ready to laugh. Hello. Every time I get on the stage, I swear to God, I feel like I am getting cataracts 10 years ago. Um, I used to work as a bouncer in Burlington, if you could not tell by everything fucking about me. And I also, at the same time, put myself through college in, in Burlington. I was working for the Boys and Girls Club. And that is the same fucking job. It's the exact same job. It's, what are you doing? Put that down. Where are you going? Why are you crying? I'm going to call your mother. It's the exact same set of circumstances going into that one job. Working in that bouncing position, I came to realize two things. One, if you are encountering a bouncer, genuinely, it's probably your fault. It's 100% usually your fault. You are just too drunk to remember why. That's 80% of those interactions. The other thing I realized is that I hated most customers. There was only one customer I ever adored working as a bouncer. It was this guy named Big Blue. Big Blue was a seven foot tall black man from South Carolina with a voice like honey. And I looked up at him and I was just like, is this what feeling safe feels like? like That's nuts, I don't get to feel this. Wonderful guy, the only customer in the bar that would have actually point people out who was about to fuck shit up for no reason. He would never do anything himself. He definitely could. It definitely was coming down to me to do that work, but ultimately, he was really friendly. And Big Blue's best friend in the world was this five foot one guy named Little Red. Little Red was a white, balding, red-headed Irishman. And they were the best of friends. On Big Blue's 47th birthday, they were hanging out outside. Yeah. And Little Red looked up to Big Blue, and he said, Big Blue, you my nigga. I will remind you that this was a small Irishman. And I knew they loved each other, but walking by them at that exact moment was a gaggle of young white college students who had just gotten through their very first inkling of like social classes. <laughs> and they say like the fastest thing on the planet is like light in a vacuum. But the speed at which a white woman will stand on a platform is far beyond that. And they started screaming in Little Red's face. Like foam coming out of the mouth, screaming in Little Red's face. And it was really uncomfortable up until Big Blue leaned to the left and stood right in front of them and said, excuse me, missus, this my nigga. And they short-circuited. <laughs> they could not understand what to do. They just stumbled drunk to future disappointment. But ultimately, I think it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but the Boys and Girls Club comparison to that point is, it's as frustrating, honestly, but like, you know, they're the future and everyone in the bar is like a foot in the grave. But ultimately, it reminds you of things. Reminds you of things you don't normally think about too often. Do you guys remember when circuses in the United States started banning animal practices? You can no longer see animals in a circus? Yeah. Like, I didn't think about that until I was working at the Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> and then I realized that they still have dogs perform in some of these circuses. It's totally okay to have dogs. And the smartest kid at a Boys and Girls Club will give you the most insane questions. Like, how many dogs equals about one elephant? <laughs> how many dogs do you think equals one elephant? Like, how big is the dog? So here's the fucking thing. <laughs> Everyone has a different fucking answer. But it's always like intuitive, and then you can kind of go dog to dog. Like these kids will lead you down a maddening path. How many chihuahuas to a great day? I think it's like eight. I feel like it's eight. But also there's a level where just like, how much do I care about this fucking species? Right? Like how many chihuahuas to a corgi? It's not one to one. It's definitely not. Thank you, that was it. <laughs> From Victor Davila, everybody showing promise, very funny. I mean, we love monologuing, we love 
people trying stand-up comedy and just talking. You don't even have to be funny. We, we prefer it, actually. <laughs> All right, anyway, we have so many hilarious and profound and mind-blowing acts. I can't even believe it. Max Orn, you were on deck. Nathan Aberg, Luke Herberman, Ambin Epps, Peter Girl, Natalie, John King, Alex Bromer, Danny Fallon, Ria Carroll, Claire Lichtenstein, Nick Bennett, Ryan, Cora D. Jelly, Eli, Lee Paul, and so many more. Can we get, oh yes, it is time, everybody. It's time for the BK native. You know him. He comes, he smokes it every week. We love him, we love having him. It's the president. Give it up, give it up for Angel Lugo. What time it is? Let's go next. They've been winning. Oh. <laughs> right. I can say that for the first time in a long time. Right? <laughs> There's a way to close out. I'll let you know one night. So, so, yeah. Happy Monday, everybody. How we doing? Happy Monday, everybody. How we doing? Come on, come on. Yeah. How we doing? That's great. Um, I'm going to just open up real quick. Recently, my cousin passed away. Um, he was shot and killed over some stupid beef. You know, real sad shit. But he always believed in me. So, you know, we got to give you that life changing shit. Now, recently, I went to a poetry expo. They didn't let me play beats. But, uh, hey, I did some of my songs a cappella. And yeah. like it or not, hey, it's still spoken words. So I think I'll watch you guys with a couple of tracks I got into D-Lo and then give you guys one to close out. How's that sound good? Yeah. All righty. So, I'll start with accordion. It's personal favorite. Headphone going out to wait. All right. <laughs> I said my pastor says laughter makes the bullets fly faster. I'm mastering domains. I'm just kidding. I'm Costanza. Listen to my rhymes and just listen to my stanzas Listen to my crimes and just listen to my banter Indulge within the madness on this mic I merely practice Got a couple J's of cactus and I need a book of matches Bachelor took some classes, now I preach before the masses Beat an iron one like that seat beneath your asses Alright yeah. Matt tells me slow it down Take a couple breaths, how I need a couple seconds Cause the flow is such a threat Seven seconds, Nash your mine is all you're gonna get You better love me now, don't you love me when I'm dead Concern may be the judge, my concern may be the dread My concern may be the grudge, my concern may be the bread I done came long ways, that's from jotting on a pen and pad Lost a couple close friends and even lost my brother, man Damn Woo. They're downplaying native and they know I'm rhyming contraband I won't dumb this down or why I'm die as an honest man Addicted to this wordplay, you do not know what you're talking about I cut us like I'm classic, skip a bottle, bring the clothes around Broken natives in attendance, can you really bring them out? Jelly kind of flow, baby, bring them sinners out All them shorties in attendance, can you feel me now? All my head bobbing brothers, can you hear me now? Alright Less than 30 seconds, let me speak upon repentance You know loyalty is all wary when you're co-defendants Feds playing freedom games with the repercussions of our actions Brotherly violence, fathers yelling, don't blast them Mama yelling in the background, don't cast them All the way to heaven, but I know I won't catch them All the way to hell, but I know I won't catch them Alright, so we're just gonna warm up Woo! So a quick little mic expo I know we're doing some quick raps and all that um, Another personal favorite Yeah, well, we can beat I gotta let the flow ride right. Feel me, feel me, feel me Oh, that's another one. It's funny, I wrote these for open mic expos, literally. Yeah. I said, I'll start my speech tonight with a touch of non-violence. Nate's about to speak, shorty. Come on, silence. Late night in paradise. I say this so you recognize these rhymes that I emphasize. I'm really meant to specialize. Approving in depression. Let me take it to the tropics. Listen with discretion, because we're switching up the topics. Listen to my sonnet. This is every ideology. Motherfuckers dodging me. They jack of Scientology. Native is insane. He's a well-known tyrant. Banks go explain that I'm a well-known client. Border control saying I'm a well-known migrant. I'ma go and say that I'm a well-known hydra. Yeah, putting the fire sweat these niggas that be down with me the same dudes they down and see is the dudes they want to be lackluster culture vultures maybe just some wannabes are staying on the down scene and i'm the dude they want to see find me surprise me but can't analyze me i'm the king of rags you can't sacrifice me villain with the pen but no i'm not a killer baby villain with the pen enough to draw them killers crazy all right so Woo! Mike, if you want... thank you thank you thank you thank you this is the single I got out. I put a little sauce. My buddy Bugs and my buddy PTP couldn't come tonight. So I want to give y'all a little, you know, open mic kind of expo. Give you that spoken word and shit. I do flow all of my lines. Uh, you can play whenever you want. I'm ready to go. Now listen to me. Do I got any Dragon Ball Z fans in the house? Yeah. That's the fucking roast. Yeah. 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 
one thing about the long hair, they don't tell you. I can't see on my sides. <laughs> 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 uh, Sad on store, won't work like a slash show. Brothers from another mother, and I know they might go above all the charts and above all the sharks. And all the fake friends that are even in the dark. Whoa, fellas, listen, we really gotta make a difference. What's the difference? You been having premonitions, huh? Found a purpose. Pig, need a definition. Lily found vision. Every rapping like a dictionary. Bitch has got a man, but I quit to build a mission. Every bitch is throwing pussy, but they do not pass a living in every soul. Listen up, body, get your insight, don't. Angelou, you can find me BKA on Instagram. Y'all want an apartment? I do that city fest. I do that section eight. Or if you got money, I do that too. Holla at him, motherfucker. Shout out to Matt, the most ill fucking easy paradise, Mike in New York City. Thank you. Yeah. Give it up for Angel Lugo, the open mic acapella. Come on, acapella flow. Come on, he freestyles all of it, it's all flow, it's all flow. So give it up for the BK native. If you're on HUD, if you're rich, he will set you up, man. Yeah. This guy's the real estate king, this is the king of New York right here. Give it up one more time for Angel Lugo. They say, that's it. Oh man, that was so touching and beautiful, amazing. All right, so we have Nathan Aberg, you were on deck. We have Luke Herman, and Van Epps, Peter Girl, Natalie, John King, Alex Berber, Danny Fallon, Rio Carroll. Clear Legion sign, Lee Paul, and so many more. Can we get Max Zorn? Max Zorn, we are stoked to hear some music from Max Zorn. Give it up, give it up. He played last week. It was super amazing. We're stoked to have him back. Max Zorn, you can, uh, I don't know, if you want, I have music out, if you want to find it, it's wherever you, look, wherever you listen to music. Um, yeah, I don't know, this is a song that I wrote over the summer, so, Woo! yeah, yeah. Woo! Crystal glistening west. 
sister So nice. All right, we loved it. We fucking. All right, Luke Herberman. Speaking of amazing musicians, you're on deck. You're on deck. So you're coming up next. Ann Van Epps, the hilarious Ann Van Epps. After that, we have the hilarious Peter Girl, the amazing Natalie. John King is in the house. Everyone. I mean, we have quite a lineup. Stick around. Come on, sit down. Have another drink. Party with us. Have some conversation. Have some good time. We're super excited about this next act. Can we get Nathan Aberg? Nathan Aberg, everybody. Going to do some... I think he's going to read something. Give it up for Nathan! Could be a Hell yeah, How y'all doing? Woo! If water came from rock, and our whole frame was one fin, Bending towards the beach, our soul flesh, a transparent speck in that first puddle. You see? Then underneath, what are these hard, still hearts? Worlds who have shut their eyes, people who turn and tuck their eyes. When water came from rock, when heavy depths of brown and black and red revived this softness. Spawn again, this slick something. Movement from none, gentleness from stern soil, touch from nothing but. 
Stale, drifting, spinning, rounded dread, but chance, water, speak. Warily, I'll open the course and beak of my eyes. To pour dribbling life to the buckling turf. This mute earth, inhospitable doom. Spinning in hot haste, nurturing nothing. I sit and judge and tighten my face and see all the strange planets in this room. Through water's trickling tread, palpitating, pumping, no different than blood, there's a miracle you can't possibly remember or believe because you were just barely awake to receive its legitimate origin. Not there to inhale and slake that first taste of life in a world rife with cracks, decay, splintering shores. Hot and haughty soil, proud and stale as hell. Water, soak the cool hard crust, teach this tired dust, remember that before the difference, the vitriol, the flames and ember, when fire freely flowed, carving channels in your hard mind, that then your surface was by water redefined. By this glossy softness, I'll find within my heart my head. Some love at last in the layers. I thought too tough for anything to trickle. To come this far from rock and not feel like water. Not feel like life's sweet searching essence. So damn this hard earth. If I'll be desensitized, this is my last and only course. Tears will well, water must come forth. With one sip, there is enough to survive. To bring the growth that you couldn't know in your dense forever spinning, you hard earth. And with one drop to flourish, with one drip to nourish, with one flush through all your layers to furnish, irrigate your skin, dry, dry contemptible soul. Remember that ember, when you were rubbed, inflamed, touched, poked, probed, boiling over until the water trickled, lifted, and soothed your fury. With a splash into your dormant skin, what do we share? What do we remember? What do we feel from our origin? Burst in fire, then sweeter scents with water's dribble. If, if water came from rock to calm this crust, I must remember Slake, sip, drink, feel, stew, bubble, think of the wet earth, the miracle mind. Consciousness did not come from nowhere, from nothing. And I will be revived when I drink again, drink from our smooth, soft, impossible origin. Animate the void. Thanks. Hell yeah, give it for Nathan, everybody. That was fucking awesome. Hell yeah. Phenomenal. We have, we have so much talent, the talent just does not stop. There's no soft parts or weakness in the show whatsoever, okay? It's highly curated for maximum effect. So get ready for more edutainment blasts. All right. The amazing Ann Ben Epps, you are on deck. Peter Girl coming up, Natalie, John King, Alex Burmer, Danny Fallon, Riyad Carroll, Claire Lichtenstein, Jason King, Eli Oddball, Matt Lee Paul. Let's get, oh yes, he's been waiting patiently. He's one of our favorites. He's one of the modern, uh, amazing uh, minstrels of the day, I think. He's one of the troubadours. We're very lucky. Give it up for. The voice of Angel, Luke Herberman, everybody.
That's what it takes to make a man feel so small Love him, then leave him If you want him to fall He'll know what he's missing And missing most of all You can take the pain Accept it for now And later you'll realize How much you found When she took out her knife And you dropped to the ground
Mikey. And Luke Perlman, thank you very much for listening. That song is called 15 Days. This is a Uniqlo t-shirt that I made this design. Um, and if you want to buy it, or, yeah. I've, I've got plenty of colors. Thank you, everybody. Woo! Wow. Give it up for Luke Herberman. That was... That song's everywhere, too. Check, check it on Spotify. That was an epic version of that song. That was a definitive take, I think. I, get, I mean, you put some extra English on that tonight. Damn, that was phenomenal. Give it up for Luke Herberman, everybody. He's a naval architect in real life. This is just a, a hobby. <laughs> Not like me, I'm trying to make it out here. He's a naval architect. I mean, that is a cool-ass job. I don't mean to blow up anybody's spot or anything, but he's looking for a venue. If anybody knows a venue in the East Village, he's he's trying to do a. a he's he's got an amazing uh, album and things. So he, you know, he's going to have an amazing gig. If anybody uh, knows of a Heaven Can Wait style venue, he's looking for that. So ch say hi to Luke Herman, great guy, great human being. All right. Peter Girl, the hilarious Peter Girl is on deck. The amazing Natalie, the, the, the King John King. We have so many kings tonight. It's a night of kings here on Anti President's Aid. Alex Berber, Danny Fallon, Rehut Carroll, Claire Lake, it's a Jason King. And, and a few more. Oddball Matt Lee Paul. Let's get, okay, one of the funniest comedians in New York. She does a show at Orphan Guitar. She's doing all kinds of shows this week. Check out her social media. The whole itinerary is there. You do not want to miss it. Ladies and gentlemen, the comedy stylings of Anne Van Epps, everybody. Yeah. What's your name? <coughs> okay. Thank you guys for sticking around. Um, so I was walking down the street and I heard a screaming sound like this cacophony of screams and I was like, what's that annoying sound? And I look over and there's just a bunch of children playing. I was like, wow, I guess I forgot what happiness sounds like. <laughs> Are you guys having fun? Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Cool, great. Uh, my cat died. Uh, she lived between 15 and 17 years um, and we got our ashes back. And uh, my mom wanted to sprinkle them in the woods, but I just wanted to sprinkle her in my coffee. <laughs> uh, so we could spend the day together. And then at the end of the day, I would either pee or poop her out. I'm not really sure how ashes work. Uh, or how the digestive system works. Um, what's next for me? Should I get married or... Uh, me, I have a boyfriend, pretty awesome, right? Uh, dating in New York is hard, right? Um, I did it, I found, okay, I found a boyfriend. <laughs> it's been really awesome. I, um, I fell in love. Okay, I wasn't expecting that, thank you. Um, I had to fake it before I make it. So this is like my first time falling in love. Um, but I did gain the freshman 15. Um, I'm chubby now, I'm chubby now. I have a muffin top. I don't know if you guys could tell or if I'm covering it up or if I can yeah. um, I asked my friend if he could tell and I had this jacket on and had pockets and he was like, it just looks like you have stuff in your pockets. Um, but no, I'm, I'm dieting now. I'm on a stew diet. Okay, it's called starving myself. Yes. Yeah. No, no, that's, it's actually the um, formal term is um, intermittent fasting. Um, so what, how it goes is like in, during the day, I eat blueberries, 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 coffee, water, blueberries. <laughs> And when the sun goes down, I binge eat McDonald's. <laughs> Have you guys had the shamrock shake? Yeah. It's good, it's good. I thought it was key lime flavor, but it's actually mint. I don't know if my taste buds are off or whatever. Um, but no, it's been going great. I don't know if you guys can tell. I've lost a lot of confidence. Um, yeah, uh, I just want to be thin again, you know? And I want to do what thin people do. You know, like be an actor. Or, 
I don't know. What else do big people do? Run up a hill without being out of breath? I don't know. What else? Thin people? Or tell me what you... Okay. Okay, so I met the, I met the love of my life. Okay, great. Woo! Thank you. And um, but last year I was just I just dated a lot of duds. Okay, and I dated this one guy, and um, we went on two dates. And I realized that I wasn't actually dating him. I was actually um, a contestant in a reality show where the winner. Uh, got to be the mom of his, uh, or the stepmom of his children um, who were going through puberty. And I was like, I just, okay, that's not for me. But I realized it because like all of his questions, they weren't really about asking me how I, like who I was as a person. It was more trying to figure out if I was like loving, a loving person who was like coddling and like nurturing and I just wasn't that person. Um, <laughs> So after our second date, I got a, a very formal um, email from him that was like, Dear Anne, you didn't make the cut. Uh, but it was a lot longer. So I, I um, sent him a letter back. And I, do you guys want to hear the letter that I sent him? Okay. okay, so the letter, okay. So it goes, Dear Jordan, which is his real name, okay. Um, thank you for your clarity. I appreciate you being so upfront with me. I did, however, book a haul for our wedding. <laughs> so just let me know your thoughts for July or August. I'm open to either. <laughs> I already bought a sweatshirt that says World Best, World's Best Stepmom. I might wear it on top of the wedding dress. Uh, it will, however, be not be washed beforehand. See you, see you then. I was being sar sarcastic. You guys know that. Right. Okay. Um, so I was walking um, here tonight and um, I heard this guy say the n-word a bunch of times under his breath um, and he sounded really angry and I looked up and um, it was a white guy and he was really short. Weird, right? I don't, okay. So. <laughs> So I noticed this trend, I don't know with what you guys experience generally, but with com comedy, there's been a lot of white guys saying the N-word. Um, and I get it, it's because like when, when black guys say the N-word to each other, it sounds so cool. Um, and like white people, we don't have an equivalent. You know, like if I'm like, hey Matt, what's up? Uh, I'm like, hey Matt, my cra my cracker. <laughs> What's up, my cracker? You know, it just sounds like so salty and bland. <laughs> Does anybody know about a good equivalent for white people or? Okay. Let's see what I wrote down. If I wrote down anything else worth mentioning. Um, I found a knife in my laundry. Have you guys, do you guys have washing machines in your apartment or do you go somewhere? Go somewhere. Go somewhere? Basement. 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 Okay. So um, I live with my boyfriend now, technically. I have my own place. I haven't been there in six months, but um, we, for a while we were just going to the laundry mat, but it feels uncomfortable because everyone's really rich and no one goes there. Uh, but whenever I go, I feel like I'm doing the walk of shame. Um, but then you feel like, you kind of feel like a homeless person at the laundromat, but then you also are spending $40. <laughs> it's so confusing. Um, but he bought a washer and dryer hookup to, I don't know, what is it called, the sink? So we don't have to leave the apartment now, it's great. Um, I don't know, okay, but the the last like three times I've gone to the laundry mat before he did that, I always find something crazy in the laundry. So um, one time I found Air Buds, um, and then one time I found like ten dollars, which was great. And then the third time I found a knife. Oh. 
I know. I, it was really scary. I didn't know what to do. I just set it on top of our laundry <laughs> and then did the walk of shame home with the knife on top. Um, oh, so I've been putting off um, going to the dentist. Do you guys do that? Or yeah. yeah. Even though I should go, I've been I've been meaning to do it. Um, I. I have a raspberry seed stuck in one of my back teeth um, and I actually hurt my tongue trying to get it out and I have like this bump on the on the top of my tongue and I was like this is a really good way to lose weight because um, I just can't eat solid foods anymore. Um, I still, the raspberry seed is still stuck in there, it's been three days. Um, <laughs> And I don't know. <laughs> Should I just leave it and like just keep losing weight? I don't know. It, it's weird. Okay. Let me see if I have one more joke or. Oh, do you guys know about ketoing? Ketoing as a diet, a way to diet. It's a keto. My boyfriend bought um, this chocolate powder, and they're like, "Yeah, you can drink this chocolate powder. You lose weight. It tastes like chocolate, and you can also eat whatever you want." The thing is, is though, it doesn't taste like chocolate at all. It tastes like chemicals. Um, and I think that's what it is. It's like you drink the chemicals. It makes you diarrhea, and that's the whole thing. And they should just market it that way. Stop lying to us. That is chocolate. You guys, there's somebody in the back having a full-on conversation about something. And I can see their movements. They're, they're using hand movements to conversate. I can see it happening. What are you guys talking about back there? What are you guys talking about? You guys, we're having a conversation here about having other nights here as well, as well as tonight, a Monday night. You guys having a good conversation that's so loud I can hear you from on stage. You guys, this is an open mic. You guys, my name's Ann Van Epps. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Yeah. Give it up for the great Ann Van Epps. Apps, everybody. Check out the Banana Show. Check out the Little Orphan Annie comedy show. She's an impresario. She's doing stuff all over the place. Okay. Give it up one more time for Ann Van Epps, everybody. Fantastic, hilarious stuff. Take care of your teeth, everybody. It's important for your life. I don't. I, I got a cavity. Okay, so I have received my first, or first presidential souvenir and merchandise today. These are the 45 Donald D Trump Make Your Breath Great Again Breath Mints. That's right. He sells everything. Steaks, university, and now breath mints, everybody. Make your breath smell like a donkey's ass, which is probably what Donald Trump's breath smells like. So... <laughs> Anyway, there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie, for that amazing... I mean, is that a message? <laughs> does that my, does my breath think? I just wanted to get rid of it. Hell yeah. I will, I will cherish that. <laughs> that reminder of the worst monster, whoever. Okay, anyway. No, that was... Uh, Okay, so we have the amazing Natalie's on deck. We have John King, the amazing John King, Alex Berger, Danny Fallon, Riyad Carroll, Claire. I'm just going to read everybody's name. I don't think a lot of these people are here, but I'm going to read them anyway. Claire Lichtenstein, Jason King, Alberto Batero, I don't think he's here. America Murphy, not here. Celeste Bizarre, I don't think he's here. Aiden Burns, I do not think he's here. Ryan, if you are here, you play the guitar. Cora D. Jelly, I don't think he's here. Eli, you told me you'd be here at midnight. Lee Paul, Joe Levy, and Lawrence Reese, Oddball Matt as well. If I didn't say your name, come over. If I did and you're not here, we will find out soon enough. Let's get... You're still doing all right. This guy is hilarious. He's a great guy. He's a New Yorker. We love having him on the show. He's got a great vibe. Give it up for Peter, girl! Yeah! Everybody, yeah! 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 Did you guys hear that? Matt called me a great guy. <laughs> when I write my book, one day, soon, when I write my book, on the back, it's just going to be great guy, Matt Proctor. 
Because you can take that shit to the bank. <laughs> Granted, it's probably like a TD bank, you know? It's, it's probably like a local chain bank. It's not one of those highfalutin Goldman Sachs type banks. My dad always tells me to get a job at the mailroom in Goldman Sachs. Because that's how it still works. It's still like it's the 80s. You just go and get a job at the mailroom and smoke a bunch of cigarettes and suddenly you're the CEO. <laughs> Trying to give off big CEO energy. <laughs> My name is Peter Girl, though, so maybe maybe she EO. Who knows, you know? If you really need me, I can fill many diversity roles, many of them. But some, someone brought up Trump mints. This is the, I don't I don't regularly do a Trump impression, but would you guys be interested in hearing a Trump impression tonight? Yeah. <laughs> They're the best breath mints I've ever had. Really good. Your breath stinks. You pop one, it doesn't stink anymore. I tried to give a breath mint to Rudy Giuliani, he spat it out at me, I said, Rudy, you're not a horse. <laughs> That's really all I have. I don't think about Donald Trump that often. I try my best not to. Apparently he's going to become the president again, and I don't want to think about that. That's yeah. very upsetting. Because as you guys can tell from my overall general vibe, I'm a huge feminist. Massive fe Biggest feminist you'll ever meet, really. Biggest feminist you'll ever meet. <laughs> I'm a huge feminist. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should start working that in and just do 25 minutes of Trump. <laughs> 25, and then I'll, I'll just I'll just argue with with a woman for 25 minutes and call it Trump v Hillary round round three four. I don't know. They should do a podcast together. You heard it here first. Okay, what was I saying? I'm a huge feminist, but I'm never a bigger feminist than when I see a mom trying to carry her stroller up or down the subway steps. I just walk by and I'm like, no. She's got that. <laughs> I don't need to help her. And like I said, my last name is Girl, so it's women supporting other women, okay? And that's what we're about here at KGB Bar. <laughs> oh, yeah. <sighs> something, something. You don't support women, women support you. That old joke about communism. I couldn't figure it out, and you're going to suffer just like I am for saying it. That's how you kill momentum in a room, baby. That's how you Hindenburg a room. It could be, it could be. Some of the guitar players here need to learn what to do with their tongues when they're not singing. Because they're well, like a fucking windmill. And not just any windmill, not a windmill in Connecticut, a Dutch windmill, okay? Remember I was in summer camp hanging out with some of the counselors and there was this old British guy and he goes, you know what a Dutch rudder is? And I go, no. And he goes, it's when you hold your own cock and another man jerks your arm off. And I go, thank you for that information. <laughs> I've never done anything with that. Maybe one day, never visited Amsterdam. Kind of don't want to now. Every man goes around asking if you need a rudder. No, thank you, sir. I'll, I'll steer my own boat. Fuck. I don't sail. Anybody here sail? We have this big sailing yeah. crap. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You're a regatta person. Yes. What type of boat? Um. How uh, rich are you? Uh, <laughs> well, my dad. Of course. Dad. Yeah. No, we knew that. That was assumed uh, in the equation. Oh no, your dad controls the lights. Uh, Fuck. <laughs> well, okay. So where does your dad sail? <laughs> In Cal you're from California? Yeah. Where in California? Monterey. I don't know. What the f Isn't Monterey the home from that movie about with the guy and that old lady? What's what's the... Come on, somebody with House the movie. House of Sand and Fog. What? House of Sand and Fog. No, okay. It's, I said, it's in Big Little Lies. I, the, the, I, I heard about that one with the Shailene and the yeah. Reese and the Nicole, but I have not watched. I've heard great things, though. I've heard great things. I really have. Big Little Lies. Best you know. No, no, no. Now I can just call back to that. That's wonderful. What else do I have to say? Uh, no. So, uh, kind of a sailing crowd. That's cool. What about tattoos? We like tattoos? Yes. Okay. You ever walk into a tattoo shop for a flash deal? Well, not you. You pay full fucking price, but for a flash deal, right? You walk in, and one of the artists, the artist is giving you shit, and you look in her eyes, and she's got those contacts that make her look like she's got cataracts. I don't know about you, the last thing I want my tattoo artist to be is blind. Okay? Like, you can't feel that shit out. I'm the one feeling it out. And I'll take the numbing cream, thank you. I don't care, I'll admit it. I like a little bit of numbing cream. What can you do? What can you do? I had things to say, and I totally just veered off. What did I have to say? The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. 
Nobody's clapping. Fuck you! I try to come up here and be, and be bold and vulnerable and hear some goddamn poetry. That's the response I get. Okay. Uh, you know what? Fine. I'll do this. Hot women don't scare me. Did I say that confidently enough? No. Hot salespeople scare me. Because I'm going to buy seven of whatever you're selling. Why do all the smoke shops have hot girls working at the counters now? It's not fair. I'm going to keep asking for more and for heavier and heavier edibles to make you think I'm cool. And then I'm going to spend $127 and my card's going to decline twice until I get the old, give it a rub and put it in. I'm not saying hot people shouldn't have jobs. I'm saying marry them so they don't have to work. That's your guys' job, not mine, clearly. Speaking of which, I had to follow Anne. That's like fighting after Mike Tyson, goddamn it. She's so good. And she also, when she, when she was calling them out, I was like, I felt like I was in class. When the teacher's like, what's so, would you like to share what's so funny with the rest of the class? But when a comedian's doing it, you're like, oh God, is this my opportunity to get in the show? No, it's not. Where am I at? What do you want from me, Matt? Uh, maybe 30, 45, something like that. <laughs> you know I can, baby. You know I can. All right. I did the feminism. I did most of this stuff. I got something good. Trust me. Okay. Uh... Subways. Not just places to push old women onto the tracks, actually. Did you know? Did you know? You can do other things there, like ride the train. And also, you could buy candy from little migrant children, which is awesome. Because, no, no, don't feel, no. These kids are going to have the best college essays I've ever heard. Can you imagine trying to go to college when there's kids who are like, yeah, I was selling candy on the subway at four years old. They're in the baby Bjorns making dollar bills. You can't beat that no matter how many extra extracurriculars you try. Fuck. God. All right. I'm gonna, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll end now with... One thing about, okay, um, somebody handed me a pack of Skittles and said, taste the rainbow. So I ducked. I'm not getting punched in the face by a lesbian again. They throw some real lefts. This, been, this whole set has been brought to you by Skittles. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, you guys. Have a great night. Thank you very much. Taste the rainbow. We're giving up the hilarious Peter girl. That was... Killer, 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 killer. We love it, we love it. One of the best, one of the best. We're keeping it rolling. We have so much comedic talent. The laughs, we're all gonna be so happy. It's, uh, the endorphins are pumping. The positive, the positive emotions, the serotonin, we love it. That's right. We're getting high on brain chemistry, everybody. Natural, natural. Okay. The amazing John King. You were on deck. We cannot wait for John King to take this by storm. Alex Berber, Danny Fallon, we are Carol Clay, Lincoln, like Jason King, and more. You know what time it is, everybody, okay? It's hot people reading poetry time, okay? She hosts it. She is the authority. Check out hot people reading poetry. It is the first Thursday. March 7th, all of the hot people will be there. I will be there, of course, as a, the hot delegate from Easy Paradise. Yes. And so we want you as hot people to be there. Give it up for the hottest. Natalie, everybody. Yeah. Woo. 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 Hey, guys, what's up? I need to just remember to start requesting the pink light. Oh, yeah. Um, I do host open mic called Woo! Hot People Read Poetry it's on our Yeah, you can follow us at Hot People as in PPL Read Poetry. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna read a poem. I'm writing a book about Woo! being a stripper. Yeah. My goal is to spread awareness about sex work and Woo! give representation to sex workers. Woo! Yeah. I feel like maybe I should sit, but it's good. I'm not going to. <laughs> I felt like I had one more thing. Oh, I, I, um, I did give Matt the Trump thing, but I am against Trump. <laughs> and I'm sorry for giving that to you. <laughs> and it was President's Day and it was fitting. <laughs> This is called um, when how lines get blurred. Woo. I'm 
I am on a first date, which I never do, and before I know it, I am tequila drunk, which is my exact type of drunk, and I'm thinking, I actually kind of like him, because he keeps taking out singles for me to slip in the waistband of the burlesque performer dancing on top of the bar, so when he asks if I want to get a hotel, I say yes. He had already had Vuv and blueberry pancakes delivered via room service, and when he booked the hotel as we were leaving the bar, I could see him filtering by the most expensive ones, and that shouldn't matter, and I used to not care. Really, I used to not care, but somewhere along the line, I started to really care. I started to notice and look. I started to think that love could only mean expensive dinner dates, that if he didn't spend money on you, how could he love you? She told me that men only love what they invest in, and you can't date a man who makes less than you, because then he is just going to use you for your stripper money, and you're not going to have that forever, baby. You're just not. It is going to go by so much faster than you think. 10,000 hours, I didn't even blink, and even though you promised yourself that your rules were hard and fast, if you just would follow them, you could fucking relax. One day, you still find yourself in a hotel room with his dick in you, and you are really drunk, and it is not big and he is wearing a condom and he is begging to take it off and I am rocking back and forth and shaking my head no 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 and then he says what if I pay you and I say yes okay and you would too because that's how fast it happens because we are already having sex and how many times have I said yes even though I didn't want to just because he kept asking and how many times has he taken it off without mentioning the fact how many times has something changed in the middle of an act and I didn't know until it was already done and this is how lines get blurred because it wasn't about the money it just became that way because at this point, the sex is so obviously not for me. It is a service. I just agreed. And that means I make the rules and everything counts. I don't care if you don't like me because you already do. Look at you, begging and offering. I don't even think I can stand to finish him. And he is offering more and more like it is some rare and precious thing something so hard for me to obtain and I am wondering if love is real. Listen, I don't want to think like this. That everything is a deal. I want to so love someone. I do. Like really love them. Once I get off his dick and put my underwear back on and lay down next to him and breathe three breaths, which I thought was long enough, I ask him to send me the money. <laughs> And he asks me, why am I making this so transactional? Even though he's the one who undid me to a girl he is paying, and maybe that's all I ever was. Call girl or not a commodity. Just like a normal girl at the club who gets in for free. Just like never picking up the check. Just like a shopping spree. I ask him, why did you offer to pay me? And he says, why are we fighting? Can you please lay down next to me? I would have asked any other girl that. Can you please act like the girl you were pretending to be earlier? I thought I was immune. I thought the things I saw in the club weren't real, but they are. And now I worry that's all sex is, even in the absence of it, an exchange, whether she knows it or not. Thank you. There. Okay, bye. Wow, amazing. that was so amazing. Give it up for Natalie. And yes, of course, you can smoke weed at hot people reading poetry. That is an advance for civilization. It just makes everybody enjoy it way more. And that's a good thing. But it's 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 amazing. Give it up for Natalie. We gotta have, this book is gonna be huge. To tr to quote the mints. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be huge. That was really amazing and touching. Give it up one more time for Natalie. Follow Hot People Read Poetry. Follow Natalie Reads Poetry. And all of it. That was amazing. All right. We have so many amazing acts to go. Alex Berner, you on deck. Danny Fallon coming up. Riyad Carroll, Claire Lichtenstein. This next act's one of my favorites. He's hardcore. The man, the myth, the legend. Give it up for John King.
Sean King, everybody. Get ready. The best, the best of the best. Thanks, Matt, and thanks for doing an impression of me. Somebody impression, and you probably can do it better than me. Ah, yeah. Meditate on that. Well, happy Dead President's Day, everybody. Did you have a good time? Did you enjoy looking at your dead president? That amazing one dollar George Washington bill? And that amazing five dollar Abraham Lincoln bill. What is missing though? Why is a hundred dollar bill Ben Franklin? He got that one. And why are they printing more hundred dollar bills in America than one dollar bills? I think it's a drug trafficking. And most of those hundred dollar bills are offshore, of course. They aren't in America anymore. Everything's gone offshore. Bring it back, Joe Biden! Genocide Joe! Bring those hundred dollar bills back. Well, um, yes, happy dead presidents. I think the day is over. Hopefully everybody had a good time. I got to work by the Happy Dead White Meat Deli. White Meat Deli. Happy Dead White Meat Deli. It goes with Happy Dead President. <laughs> and so I'm walking by it. It's always, a, it's always amazing. Uh, everybody familiar with the Cats Deli? Yeah. For $100, they will send your order free around the world. <laughs> so if there's somebody special in your life, they wanted to send some old dead white meat to, with flavoring, with spices, is free shipping for a hundred dollar order. That's for a dear friend if you want to kill them with a heart attack. <laughs> kill them gently, peacefully. Yeah, I'm amazed always though for this cat's deli. Why is there a line a block long? There must be something in this goddamn meat. They're putting something in it. It turns on the dopamine receptors. <laughs> and maybe it's the smell, the cooking the dead meat. I always go back by the Shake Shack, and I am so enticed by that smell of dead hamburger. I've been a vegan for years. Don't I look like a vegan? We're a lot thinner. <laughs> Too thin. Too skinny. Ah, uh, what's left to me? Okay, so, yeah, so they did have a good time. They waited for hours to enjoy some of that succulent, dead, white, old meat. With spices, of course, keeping the meat alive. Probably years old. We ran along to, is it Trump time? We had a lot of talk about Trump earlier. Get ready! Are you ready to pay $299 for that wonderful pair of Trump sneakers? We're at the sneaker convention in Philadelphia, because that's a hot town, evidently. And you know, the president is speak for $299. You too can be sniffing a Donald Trump tennis shoe. Now that is an excitement of a magnet. And these are the high, 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 what do they call these fuckers? Uh, high, high tops? Yeah, high tops or something. And, and the country of the American flag, if you're willing to pay a little bit extra. I wonder, oh, where's this, I wonder where these beautiful, lovely uh, tennis shoes are manufactured. Are they manufactured by beautiful, loving, sweatshop children from Thailand? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, Trump wanted to bring everything home to America. Bring it as we back. I don't think he did. He brought hate back, though. Yes! Make America hate again! Make America hate better! You know, you don't vote for who you like, you vote against who you hate. So actually, uh, Trump has more of a dislike factor, more of a smell factor. Uh, Biden's had 13% in the dislike factor. He's a little less hated, except in places like Michigan, where, oh, the Palestinian people, he forgot. Yes, I almost made the parade, the pro-Palestine uh, parade in Washington Square Park. Whoa! And I still offer the police officers, why does this, the uniform have cruelty on the back? 
This is shocking. Are they, are the police aren't cruel, are they? And it's, I missed part of it, it's the animal cruelty unit. And so I, I, I think I'm out of time almost. One minute. Well, I'm glad you stayed awake for this. Uh, the candles are beautiful and the candles are clapping and laughing and loving. <laughs> and Woo! If I can find the hole, I'll stick, stick it in with a plastic bag for safety and security. <laughs> I always use a plastic bag. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. John King always uses a plastic bag. And yes. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So important. To hear from John King. Give it up one more time yeah. for the legendary John King. All right, Danny Fallon on deck, Riyad Carroll, Claire Lichtenstein, Jason King, Celeste Bazaar, Aiden Burns, Ryan, Eli, Oddball, Matt, Lee Paul, Joe Levy, Lawrence, Reese. A lot of those people are probably not here. Is Alex Burmer here? Alex Burmer? Where you at, dog? All right. Where you at? Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, speaking of which, oh my God, we cannot wait to hear from this next brilliant mind. I mean, seriously, this guy is a great comedian. He's an artist. We are edified by Danny Fallon, everybody. Give it up for Danny Fallon. Yeah. 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 Yes, baby. <laughs> All right, good to be here, huh? Woo! Good to be alive, right? Yeah. Could be worse. Have you guys considered, um, you guys are familiar with the flat earth thing, right? A lot of debate nowadays, maybe the earth is flat. Previously we had thought the earth was flat, then we thought the earth was round. Some people believe the earth might be shaped like a hot dog. Has anyone considered that maybe the earth is just trans? <laughs> Perhaps the Earth has been a multitude of different things, and it's continuing to change and grow as it goes. I don't know about you, but if I was around for that long, I'd want to be a bunch of different things. That's just what I think about it. I, uh, I've been starting to believe in reincarnation, maybe. Beliefs are cool because no one checks you on them, you know? <laughs> You can just kind of say you believe in them. <laughs> when it's convenient for you. You know? Sometimes it's really easy to have a belief. Sometimes all it requires is just posting a black square on your Instagram. Sometimes that's the only thing it takes to prove that you believed in something good. That guy was lightly laughing, so, you know, I was just checking to make sure. Bunch of tight, honky squares weren't laughing, but... And that's all that matters to me in comedy. I just want to make black people laugh. I don't... I want to elevate black laughter. Speaking of which, reincarnation, right? I, um... Like I saw a black midget the other day. I hope that's not his only life. I did that, people have mixed feelings on that joke. Which I understand. I did that joke this one time and this black guy in the audience, he said, hey man, it's not hard to be black. And I said, wow, that is not the memo I got. <laughs> But I was like, can we admit that being a midget isn't all pros? <laughs> now, you know, I kind of was thinking about retiring this joke because I didn't know where to go with this joke. But then, I was waiting on the train one day, and um, I saw this rat, and this rat was limping. In this very significant seeming way. So I started paying attention to the rat. This rat seemed to have a lot of spiritual energy around it. So I was fascinated by the rat. It seemed like the, the rat was going through an important part of its spiritual journey as a rat. It seemed like maybe the rat was beginning to transition into the next life. Maybe the rat was dying. And I thought to myself, if I was a rat dying, I would want someone to pay attention to me. You know, I wasn't doing anything else. That's the least I can do for this rat, is be an audience to his death. I mean, as a performer, we all know how hard it is to get someone to pay attention to, you know, some words you wrote down, much less your death 
as a rat. Maybe we come back as rats, and don't you want... I mean, you're dying as a rat. That's probably one of the shittiest lives you can have. I want the, you know, 30-year-old ex-heroin addict janitor to watch me die if I'm the rat. But anyhow, so I'm watching this rat, and then my train comes, and all these people come off, and then this black female midget got off the train, and she immediately noticed the rat. Presumably because she was closer to the ground. And she was like, oh, hell no. Like, I don't know, I had headphones in. She didn't, but she said that, you know what I mean? She 100% said that. Then she went over here, she was scared of the rat. She started filming the rat. But now I'm paying attention to her because she's the more interesting thing happening here now. And she starts filming the rat. And I, I'm gonna be honest, I really wanted to take out my phone and start filming her, filming the rat. <laughs> But I know you're not allowed to do that. I know you're not allowed to do that. I don't even have to be told that. I know. <laughs> but I think you should. I think you should be allowed to do that, you know? Because it's like, fair is fair. If she's allowed to enjoy God's creation, you know, or be fascinated by it, so am I, you know? <laughs> I mean, they love this in Florida. <laughs> So I don't care. I'm going back there this weekend. <laughs> they, they love this shit. I just, I just moved to New York to find out more things to go back to Florida to tell them about, you know? Fuck it, if it doesn't work out here, you know? I know who I am. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just fascinated, I guess, by midgets, but specifically black midgets. I don't know. I mean, they keep popping up. I mean, that was like a, you know... If God, if God didn't want me to write this bit, he wouldn't make me. Now I see that black female midget all the time. We have the same transfer. On Valentine's Day, we rode the train together. She stayed on the F train and didn't get on the A train. I noticed her life. I'm fascinated by her life. I want to know more, but I can't talk to her about it. I can't, you know, I don't know if that's, that's not fetishizing. It's just like, I'm not, it's not, I'm not hard. I just, just interested about her life, you know, like, what is her, or, is her orgasm loud? Is ironically, even though she's a midget, is it somehow... You know. <laughs> you, here's the thing though, you can't look up. You can't look up. You can't look up this stuff like without finding pornography, you know. Also, I realized you cannot look up like you cannot be politically correct if you're trying to look up midget porn. You can't look up little people porn. Right? You gotta look up. <laughs> you can't type in little people porn. That's how you go to jail. Oh. <laughs> you gotta look up midget porn. I'm guessing. I don't know. Mm. Well, you know, listen. <laughs> That's about it, huh? Something to think about. All right, give it up for Matt Proctor. The comedy of Danny Fallon, everybody! Wow, dude. Wow. Hilarious. You're gonna kill in Florida, we cannot wait. <laughs> tell them every tell them about all the freaks in Easy Paradise. That'll be amazing. Give it up. Where you where do you go in Florida? Where's the club? Uh well, just different stuff. I mean I did some don't tells last weekend, but oh, Hell yeah. uh this Friday I'll be going to Pompano Brewing Company. Oh Pompano Brewing Company, check out Danny Fallon at the Pompano Brewing Company. <laughs> Hell yeah, we'll be there. All right. Is is Riyadh Carroll in the house? Riyadh Carroll. I'm sorry I did not get you up. I apologize. I apologize to the people that couldn't take the gauntlet. I get it. But we have so many amazing guys. Jason King, you were on deck. Celeste Bazaar, you out there. Aiden Burns, who knows? Ryan, you play guitar. Eli, Oddball, Matt, Lee, Paul, Joe Levy, and Lawrence Reese. Let's get the hilarious... Uh, she hosts a, a show at Caveat. I'll let her tell you all about it. Ladies and gentlemen, the hilarious, amazing, wonderful... We are so stoked to have Claire Lichtenstein yeah. back yeah. on Easy Paradise. What a thunderous applause! Yeah. Yeah. How are we doing, guys? Yeah. 
I feel like this set's gonna be kind of weird. I've had a weird day. Yeah. I didn't plan on coming here, but I had kind of a moving experience at an event called Poetry is Gay. Yes. It was so gay, guys. It was unbelievably gay. Uh, I highly recommend we all go next time, but honestly, I just want to give a round of applause for this environment. Yeah. Matt curates a really cool experience. And I just wanted to keep the juices. Yeah. Not the pussy juices, the creative juices flowing. So that's why I came. I didn't prep a lot, so we're just gonna have some fun. Um, okay. I just ended things with a comedian. Pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Good, good Dating comedians, not so good, yeah. not so good. Uh, I asked him to define the relationship, and this really happened. I asked him, what are we? And um, he said, <laughs> hold on, ladies, <laughs> he does this good voice that's honestly hot and it makes me really upset. Um, ladies and gentlemen, can you silence all cell phones? And then he farted on command. 